Activision presents a smashing blast from the past. Developed by vicarious visions. It's Crash Bandicoot! Hello there, everybody. This is General Snivy, and welcome back to more of the Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy. Now that we've uh, played through and finished the first two Crash Bandicoot games in this entire package, it's time to start the final game in the entire collection and in the original trilogy. And that is none other than. It's Crash Bandicoot War! <laughs> That's right, it's time for the final game in the entire collection, Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, which I will be referred to as Crash Bandicoot Warped because that's what I always called it and that's what I've always heard, despite this being the third game in the series. So, as with any new playthrough on PC, I will of course show off all the graphic settings I have here for my presets. Everything that I have set to, everything's set to Ultra, everything is maxed out, and I, of course, will be playing with the Xbox 360 controller. Hello! <laughs> Hello, and uh, welcome to the stream. You're just in time for us to start a new game and a new adventure. Let's do this. And just like with Crash Bandicoot 1, there is an optional, really difficult level and that level is known as Future Tense, which I will be covering at the end of this playthrough. But for right now, let's begin Crash Bandicoot Warped. Let's do this. Uka Uka is free? No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. None have dared fail the great Uka Uka even once. But you, Cortex, you have failed me twice. Great Uka Uka. It was that infernal bandicoot! From deep inside my devil prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. But you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my patience! There is now no other power source left on this planet! I know we've had a few unfortunate setbacks. And fail! But since your bumbling has managed to set me free, I am feeling generous. There is still a way to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, this time, the great Uka Uka will make sure that you do it right! After many eons, my evil twin brother, Uka Uka, has been freed from his underground prison. Long ago, I locked him there to protect the world from his malice. Now, free once again, he must be stopped. Uka Uka! 
children. Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time twisting machine to gather crystals that lay scattered across time. I have brought you here to recover the crystals before they do. To open the time portal, simply stand on a button and then jump into the portal. Good luck. Will do, man. Thank you. <laughs> so, welcome to the Time Twister. This is Crash Bandicoot Warp's uh, hub area. And trust me, we'll be coming here over and over again over the course of the game. So, as you can see, there are several different quote-unquote time periods that we can explore. Only one of them is accessible at this time, at least for the time being. Also, is that an image from Crash Bandicoot 1? And Crash Bandicoot 2, huh. I'm guessing those were uh, Easter eggs added for the Insane Trilogy. Anyway, um, I'm sorry I didn't answer your question before, but uh, I really don't know how to answer it. Unfortunately, I don't quite understand what you're talking about. Also, hello, Coco. Come and join us. Unlike the other two games in the Insane Trilogy where you had to get to a certain point in order to get Coco to join you on your adventure, she's available immediately at the start of Crash Bandicoot Warped. Because in this game, in the original, this was where she made her first playable appearance. However, it was limited to only certain stages in the game. Here, she can, uh, she can be with you throughout the entirety of your adventure. However, there may be some exceptions here and there, like with boss fights and stuff, though I'm not 100% sure on that exactly. And also, there's a teleporter here. Well, it's not really a teleporter, it's more like an elevator. At, ride this elevator here and this will take you to the optional, really difficult level known as Future Tense. There are two gems here and there's also a relic. There are no crystals in the stage, and in fact, this stage in particular is entirely optional. You don't have to come here if you really don't want to. But for me, I will be taking on that stage, but not until we finish everything else, pretty much. And we'll be saving that stage for last. Much like I did with Stormy Ascent. So, just like before... Just like before, you can save your progress at any time by pushing the left trigger. You can also load progress this way. And by the way, this monitor was also... Uh, this monitor right here was used to save and load save data in the original game. Here, it doesn't really have much of a purpose. And by the way, if you played Crash Bandicoot 2, then the controls are basically the exact same. Like, down to the frickin' T. So... Yeah, there's really no need to explain how the controls work here. Anyway, uh, on to uh, the first time period, which is the medieval time period. Whenever you uh, approach a, a, any sort of time period and go to activate any of these portals, you can play any level in any order that you see fits you. Whether it be level 3 or level 2, you can choose whatever one fits your needs. And as you can see here on the lower right hand corner, if you have Coco join in on your adventure, she will sometimes be uh, crossed out, meaning you will not be allowed to play as her in certain stages. However, this also holds true for Crash as well in certain stages, like here, where you would have to race on the Great Wall of China. Because this is where uh, Coco originally would uh, come in and help out Crash. For whatever reason, why can't he do it himself? <laughs> Nobody knows. Perhaps he's had a bit of a bad history when handling animals, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, enough jibber jabbering. Let's head into the first level, Toad Village. Let's do this. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Oh, look! I have a mask helping me, too. We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. Indeed we will. Indeed we will. And just like with the other games, in the Insane Trilogy, 
the game will throw out uh, hints like they're candy. So be on the lookout and read what each and every single one. See what they have to say and they may... You may end up learning something. Something far more useful than you may even realize. So, let's go. By the way, Crash Bandicoot Warp is the first game to introduce the uh, total box counter. You may have seen this during the course of the playthrough of Crash Bandicoot 2 from the End Sane Trilogy, but that was not a thing in the original Crash 2. Sure, it had a box counter, but it didn't tell you how many boxes there are on the stage, nor how many were in a bonus stage either. You kind of had to rush in and play the stage from beginning to end and see how many boxes there were. And basically keep that number memorized in your mind for all of time. Pretty much. <laughs> so, here we go. Toadvert Village is not a hard level whatsoever, as expected. So when it comes to Crash 3, a lot of people consider this to be the best in the series, and some people consider the second game to be the best in the series. I'm in the group of uh, saying that the third game in the series is truly the best one in the original trilogy. This game introduced quite a lot of uh, new content from uh, uh, the perspective of being able to time travel, which of course is not the most original thing in the world, but still. It's a concept that's uh, done, that's rarely done right, but in this game it is done incredibly well. At least in my opinion. The whole time travel thing is really just used as a uh, means of set pieces. Not so much for plot element reasons, but hey, I'm just saying. And there we go. First crystal and gem collected within like the first 18 minutes. Well, granted, several minutes were used for introductions and loading up the game and getting everything started. <laughs> Again, not a very, not a hard level at all. And after completing a single level, you can then head back into the same level and start doing the time trial challenge for that particular level. And in the time trial, you can earn a regular relic, known as the Sapphire Relic, a Gold Relic, or the Platinum Relics. <laughs> and unlike the first two Crash games where uh, the relics that were added in the Insane Trilogy were completely optional, here the relics are required in order to get the game's alternate ending. So. For right now, I'm just going to be concentrating on collecting whatever it is I possibly can for right now. And I'm not going to worry about relics whatsoever until after I've beaten the main game itself and then start going back to all the other levels that I still need to go through and then do the time trials that way. Because in some stages, or more or less in many stages throughout the entire course of the game, you're required to uh, more or less have a special power-up that was uh, given to you in the End Sane Trilogy at the end of Crash 2. But here, this was where that power-up was uh, introduced. But uh, as for right now, let's head on into the next level. Under pressure. <laughs> We're definitely going to be feeling under pressure, all right. <laughs> Especially if my freaking camera freezes again, that would not be good. Alright, on to the first underwater level. One of a couple of them in the game, to be exact. Get damn it. Anyway, the controls for the underwater swimming are very simple. You can basically move with just the analog stick and get around perfectly fine, but if you really want to go places fast and move quickly, you're going to want to mash the A button or the whatever your controller equivalent is, which would be like the X button on PS4 or the, I believe, the B button on Switch? I don't remember. And on PC, it would be whatever you have it bind to. 
Also, you may have noticed there are certain boxes that spin around randomly and just do that for a set period of time. Well, that's a new kind of a uh, box, really. It's more like a random box. If you want to know what contents are inside, you will have to break the box on the picture that you want it to be on. It could be an extra life, it could just be uh, additional lump of fruit, or it could be just a single fruit or nothing at all. It really depends on the box's mood. Also, we have ourselves an underwater vehicle here. Well, this thing, it serves as not only a means of getting around more quickly underwater, but it can also serve as an extra hit for you if you uh, happen to get into trouble. It's also primarily used for destroying coral, which you will need to destroy in order to bust open all the boxes in these underwater stages. So try to hold on to the underwater craft as much as humanly possible, and try not to get blown up. And even if you don't have any Aku Aku masks on you, it can serve as like a secondary uh, extra hit, so it won't consume any masks. But be forewarned, once the machine is destroyed, it will not respawn until you reload from the previous checkpoint by means of dying. Also be on the lookout for the crystals here. They are uh, more hidden than they were before, but still they're not that much uh, more hidden than they were in Crash Bandicoot 2. So I figure I'd throw that out there. So, there's that. Another level down. Three more to go within this medieval time period. And once again, you can skip the crash dance at any time by pushing the Y button on Xbox, Triangle on PlayStation, or the whatever button it is on Switch. I can't remember if it's X or Y. It's supposed to be shaped like a Super Nintendo's uh, layout. Not too sure. Anyway, on to the next level, Orient Express. And if you try to enter the level as Crash, Crash will just plop himself underneath the portal. And Coco will immediately appear out of nowhere. So, here we go. Time for the first riding level of the game. And the first level where we can play as Coco. At least in the original game, as well as here. And just like with other riding levels, like with the Polar Bear or even the Warthog from Crash 1, the controls are the exact same. However, unlike Crash, where you would uh, only be able to push, push the uh, speed up button and not really, uh, you would only get like a small speed boost and then you'd have to wait a certain amount of time before you can use the speed boost again. In this game, you simply hold the speed boost button down, and you go flying. Flying to the moon. <laughs> it's surprisingly fast and intuitive. Just, again, try not to go too fast, if you possibly can. Just concentrate on moving left and right. And once again, just like with the polar bear stages and the warthog stages before this, if you miss a single box in this stage, you might as well throw yourself throw yourself off of the Great Wall of China. <laughs> like, seriously, throw yourself down into a pit. It's honestly not worth it. Not worth uh, redoing the stage again. By the way, there are certain obstacles you can jump on and some where you just have to ignore it and move on with your life. Try this again. There will be instances where you have to decide very quickly if you want to make a jump or if you just want to ignore the bouncing spring and just move forward. Here you, uh, you can tell pretty easily where you have to go or what decision you have to make based on uh, what's in front of you. If you see any boxes in that particular pathway, go for the boxes, ignore the bouncing thing as much as possible, and continue on your way. However, if you see 
If you don't see any boxes, take the top path instead. Other than that, though, pretty simple stuff. Just move left and right, take it easy, take it slow and steady when going after all the boxes. But for time trials later on, you're going to want to be speeding through the stage the entire time that you're going. Oh, that's cute. I guess that's why uh, Coco's the one who rides the animals in this game. Because with Crash, he probably kicked the poor poor thing. <laughs> uh, no, he wouldn't do that. Would he? Well, who knows? <laughs> anyway, another crystal and gem collected, and now we can head on out. Head on out to level four. Level four is the Boneyard. <laughs> oh, let's do this. In this level, there are two gems. Uka and Cortex want tiny kid crystals and bring them to big Colosseum in Rome. Crash! Leave them for tiny or Crash get crushed! <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> Looking forward to, uh... Looking forward to a tiniest encounter. By the way, as I said, there are two gems in this stage. One of them you get for bu busting up in all the boxes, and another gem you can get for the stage, you can earn this uh, later on after you've gotten your hands on the red gem. And also, this level is the first of several running away from things level. So instead of a boulder or a polar bear or anything of the sort, now, in this place we're running away from dinosaurs. Welcome to Jurassic Park! <laughs> uh, JK. <laughs> Hashtag sorry not sorry. Thankfully, just like with the other games in the trilogy, if uh, Mr. Dino here breaks open a fox, it does count towards your total. It was like that in the original as well, so that's pretty sweet. So you don't need to worry so much about whether or not you're going to be able to break all the boxes. Also, get rid of those camo guys who just swim around in this swampy water. Who they, who they think they are? Shrek? Some funny! <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, sorry I even went there. You do want to kill those guys, otherwise they'll grab you, gr give you a great big hug, and drag you into Shrek Swamp. <laughs> uh, okay, that was the last Shrek joke, I swear. Alright, onward to the next bonus stage here. Once again, a very straightforward path. Although I think I completely screwed up. Yep, I did. Whee! That's fine. We can try this again as many times as we want. Just like with Crash 2, failing a bonus stage doesn't cost you any lives. So feel free to redo them over and over again as my internet takes a shit. <laughs> because reasons. Nah. I'm not sure why it does that randomly. It just does. So in order to get up to that, the top of that steel structure, you do need the bouncing wooden box to remain. Just that box will be enough to get you enough, more than enough height to get yourself up there. But even if you're able to get up there with uh, additional boxes, so long as you're able to get on top of the steel structure, you should be fine. You should be able to get the other boxes without an issue. Almost done with the box gem as well as the regular level here. But as you uh, prom as you all saw not too far back, there was a red gem path that we could take. Well, unfortunately, we can't take that path just yet. 
we have to earn the red gem from elsewhere now before we can uh, before we can proceed down that particular pathway. And the hints are going to be very, very helpful for deciphering uh, where the colored gems are, how to get them for the most part, as well as uh, other surprises that you may not have known about in the original release. By the way, I've only gotten like a true 100% completion in this game like maybe once or twice. That's about it. Other than that, uh, not not very much. wasn't very often that I have uh, even played through the game in general. As much as I love this game, this is probably one I've uh, not played very often. Well, maybe not as. God damn it. Maybe not as often as, say, Crash 2, but still, I'm just saying. More familiar with the second game than I am the first. I mean, the third and the first, for that matter. Another thing I've not mentioned within these uh, Jurassic World-themed levels is... There will be points where you have to go through some tall grass in the swamp. Use your spin attack to slice right through the grass and continue on your merry way, because if you try to go through it, it'll slow you down greatly. You could also slide through the grass, too. That's another thing you could do. But, uh, I recommend just spinning through the grass and you should be fine. And just like with Crash 2, Nitro Crates are in the game. Don't touch them. Go for the... Explosive, uh, green steel, uh, crate, like, towards the end of the level and whatnot. Detonate all the nitro crate boxes and grab your well-deserved reward. If you manage to break all, open all the other boxes that are in the stage. So right now, let's just claim what we came here for. The first clear gem as well as the crystal. So with that done, let's head into the next level, Making Waves. Another Coco stage, and this is considered one of the most infamous levels in the Insane Trilogy version of the game. And the reason for this is because in this, in these jet ski levels, they were changed. And as you can see, the controls for this, you can use the right trigger to accelerate forward. You can also play with class controls and hold down the A button to accelerate forward too. Anyway, the reason why levels like these jet ski levels were so infamous in the Insane Trilogy is because the control scheme was changed drastically to be more realistic with the Insane Trilogy's release. However, I've heard that recently the control schemes were adjusted a little bit to make things a little more manageable when it comes to the jet ski levels. Though they're still nowhere near as good as they were in the original PlayStation 1 release. In the original PS1 release of the game, the jet ski controls, they controlled like a dream where you can uh, literally hold down right and do circles all day long and do it fairly quickly and easily, but here, no, not so much. You have to play with the physics engine of the waves of the water, as well as the jet ski controls themselves, which can be really, really wonky, especially when navigating through a lot of deadly, deadly obstacles. And later stages aren't, are gonna be really, really, really difficult. Especially with these jet ski controls. God damn it. I knew I was gonna hit that bomb. I freaking knew. I freaking knew it was gonna happen. By the way, these levels. These uh, jet ski levels can. Uh, you basically do have an uh, arrow which uh, tells you exactly where to go. Follow this and you'll, you should be able to reach the end of the stage without getting lost very often. However, 
With these jet ski levels, you can also go almost anywhere. So long as you're within the confines of the buoys that are basically indicating your path. Like, hey, go this way, you dummy. <laughs> if you try to go outside the buoys, you'll just be blocked by an invisible wall. As stupid as that may sound, that's actually true. And as you can see here, I'm slipping and sliding all over the place. And that's just the way the jet ski controls are in the End Scene Trilogy. If I was playing the original release, then the controls would be a lot tighter, a lot smoother, and better overall. But, uh, I am glad that the controls were patched and fixed up a bit, so now it plays a lot better than it did in the original re release, where it was, like, near impossible to control the damn thing. Unless you're doing, like, straight fire sprints from beginning to end. <laughs> and that's not exactly a fun way of playing through a jet ski level of any game ever. Anyway, after collecting the crystal in the first five levels of uh, any given area, a new warp pad will appear, and this pad will be here until you uh, attempt the boss fight. After you uh, attempt it the first time and exit out by means of either quitting or getting a game over, you will be able to head, in to head back into any other levels that you previously completed or you're still working on. But until you at least attempted the uh, boss fight, the other levels will not appear again until this is done. So, let's go fight Tiny Tiger! Okay, folks. <laughs> All right, it's time for the first boss fight. And this first boss fight is taking place in ancient Rome. And our first opponent is Tiny Tiger. Just like with Crash 2, he's a very easy boss. There's also a pretty funny Easter egg that is that was implemented in the End Scene Trilogy. I'm gonna try to show this off if I possibly can. And I think if you stand right here, or not. Okay, perhaps I need to stand elsewhere. There's a certain spot where you can stand and if you stand there, the Alliance will not be able to reach you at all. There it is. <laughs> There's the Easter egg. If you stood in that spot, the Alliance won't be able to reach you at all. And if you stay there, you should be able to get through this relatively easily. So the Easter egg is, in the End Scene Trilogy, if you stand in that spot, the crowd will throw cheese at you. And the reason why is because you're literally cheesing this entire section. <laughs> they want to be entertained, dang it. They don't want to see cheese strats. They want legitimate skills. <laughs> However, if you're a speedrunner, well, the skills are just... Uh, coming from uh, playing for the stage as fast as humanly possible. And sometimes even inhumanely possible. Just saying. Skills and speedrunning, folks. <laughs> even though we're not speedrunning here today. And there we go. Tiny Tiger is defeated and we got ourselves our first power-up. The Supercharged Body Slam. For a more powerful belly flop, press A, jump, then B, at the top of the jump. So essentially, our belly flop has been upgraded to be even more insanely powerful. So that is sweet. Level is complete, and yeah. In the Crash Bandicoot Warp, this was the first game in the series 
to introduce power-ups at the end of boss fights. Well done, children. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. And of course, as uh, Aku Aku just said, we now have access to the second warp area, the second uh, time travel area. So, here we go, on to the next set of levels. And next up is an Arabian Era. I wonder if we'll be in an Arabian night. <laughs> okay, let's go into G Wiz. Where was I? Oh, Tiny was a good fellow. He hated everyone and everything, but a good heart nonetheless. Please be more reasonable with my minions next time. How about no, you jerk? <laughs> okay, so the hint for this stage is just uh, having a nitro switch destroys all the nitro crates all at once. So, that's not really much of a hint, and it's like, yeah, did you notice that? <laughs> Hope you did, because here it is. Well, <laughs> that's one way of losing a mask immediately. <laughs> Getting smacked in the face by a toad. A horny toad at that. So, within this level, we are introduced to more mythical enemies, other than just toads. We also have wizards, and really that's about it in this level. <laughs> we also have the usual goats. They are the goat, if you know what I mean. Just be careful with the toads. They are kind of horny. <laughs> I wonder if one of them is named Horny. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> nah. Maybe I'm digging too deep into it. I don't even know how that managed to hit him. I also forgot to mention another enemy who uh, was uh, in the first variation of this time period. That was the knight with a giant sword. He just stands in one spot and swings around the sword like it's the heaviest thing in the world. Like he's trying to practice his uh, Super Mario 64 Bowser tossing skills. <laughs> Who do you think you are, a speedrunner of Super Mario 64? It's not exactly easy to master the art of uh, throwing Bowser. <laughs> Although, jumping on goats would be nice. As far as hit detection is concerned in this iteration of Crash Bandicoot Warped, I'm not too sure how it works here. I'm not too sure if the hit detection was as spotty as the other two games, or if they were essentially the same as they were in Crash 3, in the original release. That's what I mean. I can't say if uh, it's been improved or if it's gotten worse just like the others. <laughs> Who knows? This is the only game in the Crash and Sane trilogy that I have not played yet. Also, I completely screwed myself out of that. Dang it. Okay, let's try that again. Kind of forgot about that particular dick box, box placement. <laughs> okay, let's go again. In this game, this is where uh, bonus stages do get slightly harder for the most part, but they're still nowhere near as hard as they were in Crash 1, that's for sure. By the way, the Super Belly Flop is not going to be really all that useful. It's not bad for a first power-up, but it's still... Far from perfect, that's for sure. 
kind of wish we were able to get our hands on something else, but oh well, not exactly much I can do about that. But we can just take uh, all the boxes that are here and just continue on our merry way as if nothing ever happened. And once again, the fastest way of getting around is by sliding and spinning into everything. But the timing of uh, doing the whole uh, slide spin trick thing is a bit trickier in the Insane Trilogy as opposed to the original. And I feel like you don't go anywhere near as far as you originally did. Though I could be wrong, I feel like the distance is slightly nerfed. So that way the final power-up that you can get here in this entire game will actually be useful for something. <laughs> At least for speedrunners and casual players alike. Alright, on to the next level. Hang em high. Time for the Radiant level. <laughs> Discover and finish the secret route for a special gem. Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> Let's go search for it. I have a feeling that the secret route, we may uh, not be able to get it right now, but then again, who knows? <laughs> wow, great job. I find it funny how uh, the death animations really... Uh, more improved significantly over Crash 2 in this game. They're a lot more creative, funny, and overall a lot better looking too. Seriously, some of the death animations in this game are quite hilarious if you truly think about it. You may think that something looks super dangerous and you look like you're gonna be slicing too, but in actuality, it's more cartoony. It's more of a cartoony kind of thing and not super violent like you would see in, like, say, Resident Evil or Gears of War or something. To that extent. <laughs> no, it's just uh, cartoony antics. And I like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like my gore and everything, like any other normal man would, but still. <laughs> but for a game like this... In a game like this, you don't really need the gold. By the way, there is something else that's worth mentioning too, and that is in the original Crash 3 Warp, there is a big difficulty gap between the US and PAL versions of Crash 3. Why? I'm not too sure, but the gap is pretty large. How so? Well, enemies act more erratically in the PAL version of the game, and the game is overall a lot harder as opposed to the US version somehow. By the way, in this bonus stage, you want to uh, time it so you hit the hit the box that uh, turns into a TNT. Otherwise, you would not be able to hit that steel exclamation point box. Trust me, you need it. Need it. Okay. And just like with Crash 2, you can swing on handlebars very easily. Just jump onto it and uh, you can swing to and fro and have some fun. Okay. I'm not too sure, but I feel like at some point we're going to encounter a magic carpet ride. At some point. Though I don't know when. Well, anyway, there we go. We got the clear gem for the stage. However, there is still the matter of locating the yellow gem. And in order to get the yellow gem, you will have to approach that level in a different way. So there, were, there's no way we can get the yellow gem right now. No matter what we do. We'll have to find a way to get that by another means later on. But right now, let's go for a ride. Ride on my hogs, boy! Woo! Let's 
do this. So, welcome to the first of a couple of riding levels. By ride, I mean motorcycle ride. In the motorcycle levels, you drive around on a motorcycle and race against these goons until you reach the end goal. In order to get a crystal here, you have to win the race. And the controls for uh, these races are very simple and very straightforward. Just hold the acceleration button to go. If you run over a turbo panel, you'll be able to do a wheelie and really gain some serious speed. And holding on to that turbo boost is the key for winning these races. However, there is another goal that I have in mind. First off, first and foremost, busting open all the boxes. If anything else. Although it would be nice if I can uh, bust open all the boxes as well as win the race. Oh yeah! Number one, baby! Woohoo! That's what Papa Bear's talking about, boy! Now that, folks, is how you ride a hog to victory. <laughs> Uh, and if you happen to get any place other than first, you'll not be able to get your hands on the crystal for the stage. You'll have to redo it all over again. So that's kind of lame. But, oh well. Not exactly much we can do about that right now. Alright, time for tomb time. <laughs> time to head into the tombs of Neo Cortex. Right. Dingle Dial's the name, and Uka Uka and Cortex gave me orders to bring the crystal to them during the Ice Ages. So give me the goods and shove off, or I'll roast you. You sure you're not from Ty the Tasmanian Tiger? Because you certainly sound like you're native over there. <laughs> okay. Now for Tomb Time, there are... There's the usual Power Crystal... And there's also two clear gems that you can get here. One of which you can get right now, but the other one you'll have to earn another way. And at another time. God damn it. <laughs> Chomp by Gator. It's one thing you don't rush in life. Gators. You see an alligator, you just leave it alone, let it do its thing. Even if it's blocking your path, just find a way around it. Trust me, you don't want to mess with a gator, ever. <laughs> Not that I've had any close experiences with alligators or crocodiles in my time. But I'm just saying, just saying, don't mess with crocodiles or alligators. <laughs> Trust me, if you try to mess with them, <laughs> they will mess you up good. They may look like uh, big lizards, but trust me, <laughs> them suckers will rip you to shreds if you let them. And they will roll around at the speed of frickin' sound. Because, you know, they got places to go. They gotta follow their frickin' rainbow while also chopping off some heads along the way. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, good. Now for that bonus stage, in order to get up there on top of that steel structure, you would need to be creative and quick with the uh, box destruction. If you don't uh, jump on the top box that is on top of the TNT before it detonates, you will have no way of getting on top of the structure unless you uh, wait until way later until you get your hands on another special power-up. In which case, uh, <laughs> Why are you even bothering going after all the boxes right now? So, monkey. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you could kill... What the hell was that? I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you could kill the monkey in the original. And there's a problem with that perception, apparently. I thought I was on the platform, but no, apparently I was off in Venus. Okay. Once you uh, bust open all the bases where the monkeys reside, then 
can't really even need to worry about the monkeys anymore. Don't just cower in fear. By the way, this prank, you can use this over and over again as many times as you want. Not really much of a purpose, but it is a nice detail. That, nice detail that is even there. By the way, since this is an ancient tomb, there are bound to be traps, and there's a lot of them. By the way, welcome to the fork in the road, where one of the clear gems you can get now, but the other one you'll have to wait until later. In order to get the other clear gem, you need the purple gem in order to open up that door. But for right now, we can, uh, we'll just proceed onward to the other path where... Obviously, it's our only option. So, another thing that's worth noting within this ancient tomb is that there's, uh... There are also, uh, rays of light shining from the sun. Don't step into the light, because underneath that ray of light lies a hidden trap. If you activate the trap, then, uh... It's very likely you're going to end up getting shot by the trap and will be sent to an early grave. And trust me, that's not fun. It honestly isn't. Oh, come on. That's bull crap. Okay. Bye. Get your flamethrower out of here, boy. You don't need that crap. No, that's uh, more so... That's for someone else entirely. And as you can see here, in this stage, there's uh, 95 boxes. And unfortunately, it seems like we can't get either one of the clear gems right now. And that's because of the fact that the box requirement for this level involves you uh, backtracking between the main path as well as the optional path. So we'll have to worry about that level again later. All right, let's head into the next one, Midnight Run. Another run on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> hmm. Holding run lets Pura smash through certain hazards. <laughs> Honestly, I never even knew about this until I watched the speed run of this game be done. Not that long ago. <laughs> I think it was also this way in the original, too. Though I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that uh, in the original you can also charge straight through boxes. Yeah, damn it. So as I was trying to do, I was trying to not only charge forward, but also uh, try to get through it at a decent pace. As you can see, this level now introduces several new obstacle types, including, uh... Okay, what the devil was that? Why did I overshoot the dang box again? Dang it. Damn it! I did not mean to do that. I meant to go past the guy and not bounce on him. Dang it. I always feel like I'm transitioning into a different screen. <laughs> I panicked, slipped off the dash button, and fell to my doom. Hmm. I feel like I'm keeping my mouth. Okay, what's up with the uh, Dr. Neo Cortex uh, showing off this ugly mug? Seriously. Is he really that egotistical? Who does he think he is? Emperor Pilaf from Dragon Ball? <laughs> uh, well, granted, uh, Dr. Neo Cortex wants to rule the world and everything. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> that was cute. Seriously though, why is it that uh, Coco just doesn't uh, hop back on uh, Pura and continue on their merry way after being smacked around by one of uh, Dr. Cortex's goons? 
funny thing is, I never knew that her even had a name. Not until, uh, falling into my doom by lovingly hit tapping the frickin' jump button like a frickin' goober. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, maybe for that section, instead of, uh, dashing, maybe I should just jump for it. <laughs> uh, maybe then I'll be able to bust through both boxes without overshooting my target again, like I've been doing so many times over now. There we go. Now that is how it's done. After getting smacked in the head again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Funny thing is, in the original Crash 3, Pearl didn't even appear in that death scene. Instead, Coco would just spin and uh, just collapse. Like literally, she would just fall backwards. <laughs> kind of calling back to uh, the first Crash game and its death animation. Just saying. Not sure why that's uh, not the case here. Perhaps maybe that was a bit too violent and they wanted to get a little more creative. It's possible. Huh. Oh god, that was too close. <laughs> Dang it! Ah. <laughs> uh. That was dumb. Gotta admit, that was pretty dumb. But can you really blame me for panicking? Especially if you can't see what obstacles are coming your way. By the way, it is possible to end up missing the crystal here. If you miss it, well then unfortunately you will have to either throw yourself off the pit into your the nearest pit or do the level all over again. Thankfully in this level, you just uh, simply throw yourself off, off into the nearest pit and you'll be able to grab the crystal again, no problem. But other than that though, a pretty dang difficult level, especially for the second warp room area. This thing, not exactly a fun time. Okay, on to the next, uh, boss fight, Dingo Dial! Right, now you've gone and done it. Them crystals are mine. Oh, really? We'll just see about that, Dingo. <laughs> Break out the butter! Oh, really, you little bugger? <laughs> Bring it on, you twat! <laughs> okay, so Dingo, in this particular uh, boss fight, this fight was actually uh, adjusted quite a bit compared to the original game. He's a lot more aggressive and he's more prone to predicting your moves. So anyway, what you're supposed to do here is wait for Dingo Dial here to shoot through his uh, own structured shield. Then once you have a big enough opening, charge right through the middle, give him a good smash, and then get out of there before his tank explodes. Or you can cheese it and just uh, jump over all three of the shields without much of an issue whatsoever, and boom, he's already done. Whatever you say, dude, whatever you say. So, after defeating Dingo here, we got ourselves a new power-up, the double jump. Just simply hit the A button or the jump button again while in the air to execute the double jump, and it's as simple as that. One of the best moves in the entire freaking game. And we're going to get something even better at the end of the next warp room, I'm pretty sure. So, 
Now that that's done, we're about ready to head into warp room area number three. And this place is going to be taken... We're going to be heading into ancient China. So, let's head into Dynamite! Haven't we gotten far for a pair of fuzzy marsupials? I am Dr. Nefarious Trophy, master of time and the creator of the very time twister machine you see before you. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex have sent me to end this little shroud, so you won't be leaving my area with the crystals, I swear it! Oh, really? We'll just see about that, buddy. Because I swear, <laughs> uh, we'll be robbing you blind. Okay, so for this level, um, there is another path where you can, uh, which you can unlock by earning the yellow gem from a couple of levels back. Also, say hello to a new enemy type. Is it like some sort of bandicoot fish hybrid thing? I have no idea what it is. It kind of looks like a seal slash bandicoot hybrid, and I don't like it. <laughs> it and it's kind of creeping me out. It was even creepier in the original, too, as it looked a lot like Crash. Why? <laughs> Who knows? Okay, now say hello to a new friend! So during certain stages you can uh, hop on these uh, little baby Tyrannosaurus Rexes here and ride them as if they were a horse. They don't mind, just bust them out of their eggs before they're even born. <laughs> and then enslave them and make them do your bidding. <laughs> They'll totally appreciate that. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Well, that wasn't good. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll be able to get another one sometime down the road anyway. And just like uh, with the uh, underwater sea vehicle, uh, it also functions as a second hit, where if you don't happen to have any Aku Aku Mass, or even if you do, if you uh, hit an obstacle or get hit by something, then the dinosaur just simply vanishes without a trace. So other than that, uh... Nothing really to worry about there when it comes to the dinosaur whatsoever, it just vanishes. By the way, this is going to be the first of a couple of levels where uh, there are some sections of the level where it is labeling you to use certain power-ups. Basically, it's giving you a hint within the level itself. So, you have to look out for that. By the way, I'm not too sure, but I feel like you can only ride the little miniature dinosaur so far. And then afterwards, uh, you're forced to get off of him and continue on your way. I can't do it. I really wish the camera was a little bit further back. That way I can see a little bit further down the road here. Damn it! I knew that was gonna happen. It was either that or get crushed. <laughs> uh, I'd rather burn my ass than get crushed by a freaking uh, Triceratops. Seriously. Who would want that? No one. Unless you're using them for like construction work or something, then by all means. <laughs> well then again, if PETA was a thing in the Stone Age, then uh, we'd be in serious trouble here. <laughs> okay, let's try this again, hopefully without getting crushed or 
burned alive. You know what I mean, folks? That would be great. Oh, come on! I didn't even touch the thing! And somehow I still got burned. Okay. What the hell was that? What the hell was that game? Well, whatever. It's gonna be fine. There is one other thing I have not yet talked about, and that is... There is also one very big difference when it comes to the end scene trilogy, and that is... Oh, wow. Not even close to getting all the boxes, huh? Oh, well. Doesn't look like we can even get them anyway until later. Anyway, as I was trying to say before, my webcam froze again. Dang it. Ah. Uh, was hoping to have avoided that tonight. Alright, let me fix that. Here we go. And back to the game. Okay. So, back to what I was saying before. Uh, all the game over screens in the Insane Trilogy are universal. So whether you get a game over in the first Crash game, the second, or even the third, all game over screens are the exact same. With Uka Uka basically saying, GAME OVER! And just staring at you all maniacally and giving you the option to try again or just simply exit out of the stage. Okay, on to Deep Trouble. And in this stage, we can only play as Crash. By the way, it is possible to get the... Uh, both the clear gem as well as the red gem that are hidden on the stage in particular. We just need to do some uh, clever uh, manipulation with like the checkpoint system as well as uh, busting open all the boxes and be clever with uh, how we proceed through the stage and not screw up like that. Because if you uh, lose the little submarine thing too soon at any point, then <laughs> unfortunately you're shit out of luck and you will not be able to destroy all the boxes. Which is really, really bad. Let me in, please. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Let's -a go. Let's go for a nice, long, tedious swim. <laughs> I seriously wonder why Coco can't swim here in this, uh, in any of these underwater stages. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You would think that she would be able to do so, hop into, like, some scuba gear, and just ride it on out. Perhaps the reason why is due to the fact that the scuba gear is made solely for Crash, and that's it. And so the scuba gear is not able to fit her at all? Your guess is as good as mine at this point. Damn it. I thought that was a fish. I thought that was a big puffer fish, to be honest. By the way, I don't think I've explained the uh, how to fire the torpedoes from this uh, little miniature fish submarine thing. You just simply push the spin button that you would, uh, dang it, I got stuck in between the damn pipe and uh, death. So as I was trying to say, in order to fire torpedoes, just push the spin button. It's as simple as that. Fire. Just keep firing. You have infinite ammo with this thing, so feel free to just spam, spam, spam. Okay. One thing I'm kind of wondering right now. Some of the barrier, like, obstacle things have uh, electrical properties. 
Yet they're spinning around underwater. Damn it, Sharky. How is it that they're able to spin and produce electricity without zapping the entire ocean floor? Hell, how is uh, electricity even uh, pouring out of those uh, obstacles in the first place? Video game logic at its finest, folks. <laughs> the kind of logic that makes you scratch your head and question life's uh, many question life in many, many different ways. Okay. Oh, come on! Really? Every time I grab a mask, I immediately lose it. For some stupid reason. I just can't seem to hold on to my masks in this game. What the deuce? God damn it! Come on! I hit that shark! And not in the way you were thinking either. God damn it. Okay, so note to self. The whirlpools themselves hurt you in the insane trilogy. While in the original, it was like the blades themselves that were sucking you in. That's what was uh, causing you to die. Damn it. Sucked in like a vacuum cleaner somehow. Even though there's like no sort of tube or anything that crashes going down. And it's very easy to get sucked in too. So when it comes to certain sections like those that uh, have like suction vacuum things. All you would have to do is just uh, mash the A button and swim through it as fast as you possibly can. Also, keep this area in mind. We're going to need to come back here later. And we're going to need to be clever when it comes to uh, this section. Because if we screw this up, then <laughs> oh, there's going to be hell to pay. Move, move. God damn it! All because the damn uh, fish just had to be at the worst possible spot. Plus it seems like uh, when Crash is uh, swimming back and forth, he doesn't go like straight back and forth like right away. There's some uh, additional animation time. Plus he uh, continues to swim in that particular direction for quite some time. By the way, I have no idea if it's possible to accidentally destroy your little vehicle here if you fire a torpedo at like the wall or something. What I highly recommend that you do for these sections is, uh... Whoa. First of all, not be stupid and fire at the the nitro crate boxes from a safe. God damn it, man! All because that section is probably the worst part of the entire level, and that's like the end of the normal route too. However, there's still uh, a couple of things that you must do in order to uh, get through the section in one piece. By the way, there is a turbo button for uh, the submarine here. And the turbo button is either the... God damn it. You know what? I'm just gonna blow myself up and die. Or just go for a swim. Whee! Down to go. So anyway, as I was trying to say, the turbo button is useful for getting past uh, certain sections without blowing yourself up. Heck, I don't even know if the controls even mentioned that this uh, vehicle had a turbo button. That's like something you'd have to find on your own. 
even so, the turbo button itself is uh, only useful in uh, certain places, in certain situations. Oh my god, I can't believe I destroyed the damn thing again. Damn it. <laughs> and uh, as you can expect, if you touch a puffer fish, of course you die. But you also get a pretty funny little animation where Crash himself swells up like a frickin' balloon. And yet he still floats in the same spot underwater. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Logic. I always destroy the damn thing around this section. Whether it be due to the nitro crates or getting sucked in by a freaking vacuum cleaner. <sighs> damn. I will say this these underwater levels are definitely harder in the Insane Trilogy just due to the fact that uh, the vortexes themselves and those little vacuum cleaner like things, whatever the hell they are. Even the water that's, uh, that's being sucked in can, uh, damage you. And they have a pretty wide hitbox, too. What's even worse than it's, it seems like this thing, uh, only proceeds, uh, it proceeds only left and right, even if you try to stay still for just a moment to try to snipe something from a distance. No, it doesn't work like that. It only moves left and right, even if at a standstill. I think we've gotten all the boxes here. Yeah, we do. God damn it. Still got sucked in anyway. Okay, at least we got a pity mask for this section now, but even so, I still don't like the fact that the. Still don't like the fact that I died so many times at this point. Just due to the fact that I can't snipe shit from a distance very easily without moving ever so slightly to the left or right and getting sucked in my vacuums constantly. Plus the blast radius on the nitro crates is substantially larger in this level, in these levels. Okay, I think there's still one box over there. Nope. That was a waste. And this is why you need the little uh, vehicle thing, so that way you can take the hit when you need to in order to get back to where you need to be. Because going backwards, even in these underwater levels here, camera is not exactly the best of friends with you. Okay. There we go. Anyway, in order to detonate the TNT, you would uh, first need to make it solid, and after making it solid, you just simply touch the TNT in order to start its detonation countdown. God damn it. Come on, game. Move, damn it. Is this going to be another one of those sections where I need a pity mask in order to proceed? Because I can't stay still while swimming? If that's the case, that's just really, really stupid. Oh, 
Okay. We're almost to the end, folks. Just got a little bit further left to do. A little bit further left to go, rather. Now I see a sharky. And there we go. There's the clear gem, and there's the red gem. <laughs> Phew! God damn, that was a pain in the freaking ass. Also, I just noticed this now, but uh, we do have a new follower, and that is Surfer Springs. Sulfur Springs? If that's how you say your name and you're watching this now, thank you so much for the follow. Hope you enjoy your stay here. Anyway, now that that's done, let's proceed onward to the next level. High time! In this level, there's, of course, the crystal, the clear gem, as well as a purple gem. So, let's head on in and see what we can do and see what we can grab. So, you pesky little rats aren't going to back off, eh? Just you continue to gather crystals and see what I do. Oh, really? <laughs> Okay, so just like with Crash Bandicoot 2, there are certain levels which have death roots in them. Death roots, in order to access them, you need to reach the point where the death route is located within the levels themselves without dying. And if you die at any point in the level, you have to exit out of it and start all over. And I felt like a freaking idiot because I panicked because I thought I was going to get burned. Ugh, Jesus blip. Oh, how I hate panicking so much so easily. Okay, let's go back in and try this shit again, please. That would be good. Thank you very much. Okay, so within this uh, next Arabian level, it's literally an Arabian night. <laughs> Not only that, but we also have access. We also see some brand new enemies that are uh, showcased in the level. Primarily the ninja like enemies that just hang out in windows and hurl Molotov cocktails out. <laughs> so that's fun. Not only do we have to deal with them, we also have to deal with these monkeys. Oh, come on! That is bullshit! Uh, I really wish that uh, death routes allow you to access them, even if you do die, but no. No, you have to make it to the death route without dying once in the stage. Which is really, really dumb. It's the way they've always worked. I hate the fact that it's the way it is, but whatever. <laughs> just gotta roll with the frickin' punches. And just take death after death after death. And go at this over and over again until eventually we win the day. Or make it to the death route. Whatever, whatever happens first, I'd welcome it. Oh my god. Can we please get up the thing? Thank you. So, one thing that's uh, worth mentioning right now is... Unlike the original Crash 3, where uh, Crash was the only one who could access the power-ups, Coco can access them as well. Since Coco is now a playable character, she also has access to the same power-ups as Crash. So any power-ups you get as Crash, you can also use them as Coco. So you guys throw that out there, not necessarily for trivia reasons, but so that way no one gets confused super easily. Jesus, have we not reached the death route yet? Oh my god. 
And another thing that's worth noting too is just like with Crash 2, any deaths in the bonus stages do not count towards the death counter. So even if you die in a bonus stage, it you can still access the death route. Suffice it if you um, made it to the death route before kicking the bucket. If you happen to die at any other point, then unfortunately, uh, you'll not be able to access the death route unless you exit out of the stage and do it all over again. There we go. Bonus stage completed. Another pretty easy bonus stage. This is one where you would uh, take advantage of the double jump ability in order to get access to uh, higher areas and also certain boxes too. Oh god. I hate jumps like that so much, especially when it plays with your depth perception. Oh my god, I'm panicking so hard. Phew! Okay, we made it. Finally made it to the death route, folks. <laughs> Not a scratch, scratch. Give it time. <laughs> when you reach a death route for the first time, you will get an achievement. So just like with Crash 2, death routes are considerably harder than the main routes themselves. Whoa. Thankfully, if you do die in a death round, it's not the end of the world. You can just simply go back to the death round and do it again. That is, of course, of course, if you run out of lives, then you're completely screwed. <laughs> Alrighty then. Let's give this another shot. So when it comes to death routes, you're gonna want to fully utilize all the powers that you have up until up until this point. Use everything up your arsenal to get through the death route safely and efficiently. There are a lot of deadly obstacles that are going to be trying to destroy you and ruin your plans, ruin your day. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be on the carpet or not, because you never know because of depth perception and crap. And there we go. Death round is complete. And we can just exit now if we so desire, and we'll be perfectly fine. But I'm going to do this instead. Whee! <laughs> as long as you grab the gem in the death round, then you're going to be perfectly fine. And you can just continue on the rest of the stage like normal. So, this is how it's possible to access both the uh, purple gem that's on the death route, as well as the clear gem here too. Learned about this recently, not too long ago, when I looked up a, a walkthrough for this game. I primarily used the walkthrough as a more of a reference sheet checklist of any noteworthy levels I need to keep my eye on. And those levels are primarily the ones with the colored gems on them. Also, say hello to another new enemy type. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Did not mean to do that. The new enemy type who I was trying to talk about before are the ones that throw those uh, swords at you. <laughs> I love being able to do that, just set things off from a safe distance and just watch the fireworks as they go off. Oh, so much fun. There we go. Level is completed. Another pretty easy level. But, uh, of course, getting up to the death route, <laughs> uh, that's the scary thing. Death routes are always the worst. Here we are. There's the crystal, the clear gem, and finally, the purple gem. 
There we are. All right, on to the next level. Road Crash. <laughs> Ooh, another fun motorcycle level is on the way, folks. Hmm, accelerate just before the green light for a boost. Hmm, sounds like a pretty useful hint. I'm going to see if I can utilize it. Here we are. It's like getting a small little head start. There is another thing that's worth noting too, is that uh, these uh, motorcycle levels, I don't know if they changed the control schemes on the, these levels in the Insane Trilogy as compared to the original or not. I feel like the controls were mostly untouched. In fact, they feel better here. At least from my experience so far. Granted, uh, this is only the second time I've played through one of these levels ever, so <laughs> that can always change. But for right now, though, this feels really nice, smooth. And by the way, there are certain turns in some of these levels, especially some of these later levels, where you have to uh, approach them the right way. And that is, you have to release the accelerator. You have to release the accelerator in order to make the turn. Otherwise, you're going to go into the dirt. And end up sliding into a sign. And that's like the last thing that you want to do. Especially when you're trying to get past racers. And then you end up colliding into them during a speed boost. Or colliding into a police car. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to end up doing this level again, regardless. Because I can't seem to get out of fourth place no matter what I do. Oh, come on! I should have been able to fly over that. Pretty sure you could have in the original if you were fast enough. But, uh, doesn't look like it. <laughs> God damn it. Well, we got the gem at least. But unfortunately, we will have to do the level again in order to get the crystal. I don't know why you can't just uh, simply choose to retry the level. Instead, you're kicked out of it. Like, as soon as the race is over. So, no matter what, you have to exit out of the stage, wait for, through a loading screen, grab any and all rewards, throw them out from your stomach, and then... Attempt it again in order to get the primary reward that you need for the stage in order to progress further into the game. And of course the damn uh, camera froze again. Again, this only happens when I'm in between freaking loading screens. Damn it. It seems like this only happens when I'm playing the Insane Trilogy. It doesn't happen any other time. My only guess as the reason why that happens is the reason why is when I'm doing all this streaming and playing the game at 60 frames per second, cranking everything up to maximum overdrive, <laughs> though I can play the game smoothly and even broadcast it smoothly, it's just in between loading screens, that's where the frame rate tanks. And also creates additional stress in the software on my computer. Also, hit an exit. I kind of forgotten about that. So, <laughs> after running into that alien sign, you're thrown into another level immediately known as Hot Cocoa. So, within this stage in particular, you can go after the box gem as well as the relic. Thankfully, the box gem, you can uh, just drive on through and just uh, continue and just drive around as much as you want to. God damn it. This is the first of several hidden levels in the game, too. And unlike the other... Uh, Wavecraft level that we played up to, until this point, uh, unlike the other ones, this one has no waypoint indicator, so we 
have to drive around all on our own, essentially blindfolded, and find uh, the primary objective in, uh, in order to exit out of this stage is to find the uh, Nitro Crate Detonation Steel Box, hit that, bust it open, in order to detonate all the Nitro Crates for the remainder of the stage, and then make your grand escape. Or you could utilize a glitch using the wonky physics engine of the uh, craft watercraft gear and just barely tap the nitro crate, then speed away just as the nitro crates detonate. God damn it. And then uh, exit out of the level that way and complete it extremely quickly. That is another way of uh, completing the level relatively fast, but uh, as far as my goals are concerned, ow. Okay, it looks like for that box, you can't really bust into it until you detonate all of the nitro crates in the stage. Also, screw this freaking level. I just thought of the uh, moment where Ken Icarus and some com call me Johnny reviewed this level in particular and censored mode was completely busted. <laughs> oh my god. Mm, that was hilarious. That was a really hilarious moment in the uh, review. Totally check it out, by the way. <laughs> just saying. In the original version of the stage, it was definitely easier because of the easier control scheme, but with the Insane Trilogy's uh, new control scheme and new engine, pretty much, and making everything from the ground up, readjusting the physics, for better or for worse. And yeah. This level was definitely one of the more infamous levels, along with the rest of the Jet Ski Coco stages in the game. Just because of the new control scheme. And being able to quick turn was also a very nice feature when it comes to the original release of the game. I'm just gonna take it easy. There. Phew. Nearly got it. Okay. So essentially you can uh, drive through this level in any way you see fit. You can uh, save the checkpoint boxes for uh, any time you hit a certain milestone or after you uh, bust open a certain number of boxes. Other than that, uh, other than that, another uh, pretty standard uh, Coco Jet Ski level, pretty much. With the exception, of course, of the control scheme being altered, for better or for worse. Depending on personal preference. Also, screw that frickin' jump! That is the worst jump in the entire level. And the reason why it's so freaking bad is because you have to turn the jet ski as straight as an arrow. If you don't, then you're going to end up uh, clipping one of the damn nitro crates, either on either side, and you know, you're just going to have a bad day. You're going to die. Kids going to die tonight. Phew, there we go. All the nitro crates have been detonated, however, and we still have the matter of the rest of the bombs that are in the stage. So, after you detonate all the, uh, bomb, not bombs, but nitro crates in the stage, head to the nearest checkpoint, so that way it is marked. And then just proceed onward to the rest of the stage and try to bust open all the crates that you possibly can. There are 70 crates throughout this entire island. Try to bust open all 70 and grab the gem as well. 
and uh, you should be good to. Damn it! All because I bumped into the little island. Ugh, it's full of freaking drama, man. Ugh. seriously hate jumping over these jumps that have bombs on them. <laughs> they are the worst jumps. Damn it! Okay, so when it comes to that jump in particular, <laughs> you have to time the jump in just the right way where you don't go too far and then hit the bomb wall or end up too short and miss the box entirely. I think that's the only box that I know of where that's the case. Ah, crap. I hate missing boxes over bomb pits. Really do. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, too close. Come on. There we go. Need the jump. Now we just got to drive back around and hit the other boxes without blowing ourselves up first. gonna bust this open. There we go. Only got a few more boxes left. There's seven boxes. And I probably located another... Wait, what the... What the devil was... I did not see that shark there. I swear to God, he wasn't there. Ah, uh, goddamn it, game. Why you gotta be so freaking mean? Hiding shark in like perfect camouflage to the point where you can't even see them. Just makes no freaking sense to me. this formation nice and slow or just race straight through that works too as far as the other four oh man where are they that I have no idea at this point oh dear I may have to look this up and hopefully won't end up killing myself while trying to look for them Jesus flip Oh, how I hate how this stage is just not linear at all. It's open-ended, so it's uh, pretty easy to end up getting yourself lost in the stage. There are many different ways of going about the stage, and you can go about this in any direction that you see fit. Okay, there's a couple over here. Son bitch, son bitch, son bitch! One left. One more to go. That's all there is. This is one last box. Okay, let's go in a different direction so that way I don't get chomped alive again. This is unfortunately going to take me some time in order to locate the damn box. 
I really apologize that it's taken me so long just to find a single frickin' box in this stage. Like I said before, I'm not the most familiar when it comes to this game. Though I have played through it before and I do know what it is that I'm doing. It's just, uh, finding everything is a bit of a chore and a pain in the ass. Especially if you go the wrong way, then, uh, <laughs> well, may the force be with you, buddy. Because you aren't going to be going much anywhere. Uh. Okay, let's go search. Search and destroy. Search and... Seek and destroy. Okay, seriously, where the hell is this box? Why is this so freaking difficult to find? Okay, I may have to look this up. Because I have no idea where to fork the look. Wait, is that it? No, that was just nothing. <sighs> Dang it. Anything over here? No, not that I can see. Again, really wish I knew exactly where the hell it is I'm supposed to go. Where's the box? Shit. Almost got chomped again by the invisible shark. <sighs> yeah, screw this. I'm gonna go look this up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I found where the last box is located. <laughs> you never believe this, but... It's actually underwater. And there we go. That, my friends, is box number 70. Now we just gotta make it back to the other side of the island without falling into stupid crap. Please let me make it back. Right there. This one last push. Got it. Phew. Damn, that took forever. I apologize that it took me so gosh daily dang long. And by the time the YouTube version of this is released, me searching for that damn crystal, or gem rather, yeah, that's going to be cut out completely. Okay. Now that's done and over with, let's head back into Road Crash and actually go for the damn crystal this time. Now that Hot Cocoa is finished right now, we will be going back to that stage later for the relic, that's for sure, but still, just saying. Well, that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. Oh well. Just gotta make the most of it and try to win the race this time around. And since I didn't get the crystal here, despite me completing the stage, I don't have access to the time trial yet. You only get access to the time trial after you collect the crystal in the stage. Uh, out of my way, jerkwad. Hmm. 
Gotta love that Poppin, am I right? <laughs> you see, Poppin is a terminology used for objects just popping into existence from a distance. It's a rendering technique primarily used in older games to save on uh, video memory on the uh, console's hardware. Or in, the, in this case, the hardware of the, uh, the hardware of your rig. Oh my god, turn, damn it! God, this kind of reminds me of the go-karts from, uh, that one little fun park just up the street from where I live. It's like, uh, I'm so squished up in the frickin' cart that I can't turn a certain direction without moving myself in the most awkward way possible. God damn it! Frickin' asshole had to be in my frickin' way. Ah, uh, yeah, it's over. Lost again. Well, whatever. Damn it, man! Restart level? Yes, please. Okay, so you can restart the level after losing the race. Okay, it only just doesn't reset in the original as well as whenever you collect a gem. So if you uh, are going after the box gem and you manage to collect the gem but not the crystal, well then you're kicked out of the stage no matter what. Even if you want to try again, you will have to restart the entire stage by re-entering it regardless. Man, for the second uh, driving level here, this sure is really damn difficult. <laughs> That's for sure. Really damn difficult uh, driving level. <laughs> How? I didn't think it was that hard. God damn. It's only the second frickin' uh, motorcycle level for Pete's sake. Funny thing is, these motorcycle levels are some of my favorites in the entire freaking game. I love these levels. But, uh, of course, assholes like them have to ruin the stage. <laughs> For everyone, including me. Seriously? Why couldn't I turn? <coughs> 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 Damn saliva! <coughs> I went down the wrong tube! Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Crap! That just costed me the race. That just costed me the goddamn race! Mother! Mm. All because I had to accelerate far too frickin' quickly. Motherfucker, man! Why am I struggling so much in these goddamn stages? because I hit the fucking rear of that asshole. I lost.
don't. Fuck you! I win! Jesus Christ all goddamn mighty. Oh my god, it's finally done. Ugh, I am so fucking pissed that I'm talking through my damn teeth. Ugh. My god. That was horrendous. I can't believe I was stuck on that goddamn level for so long. Well, you've crashed a few parties before, but I never expected you to make it this far. If you don't turn back... I inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe! <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, uh... Looks like uh, Cortex and Uka, Uka are really starting to get pissed due to the fact that we're progressing so uh, so freaking far into the game at this point in time. Well, anyway, <laughs> welcome to the next medieval level, folks. Within this place, we'll encounter a new enemy type. These uh, giants. With the uh, two head swinging clubs. Oh, come on, that's just bull crap. Anyway, in order to dispose of them, you can't spin into them. Instead, you have to double jump on top of their heads in order to get rid of them. Worth it. There you go. Other than that, there's no uh, additional enemies that we really need to worry about this uh, in the uh, medieval level, or this one in particular. Oh, come on! That is some bullshit right there! Sometimes you spin into a series of boxes and break only one box. And sometimes you break both of them, which is really, really dumb. Bye, goat. <laughs> There's also a pretty funny uh, death animation as far as uh, dying to a goat is concerned. Again with that? Okay, you know what? Fuck it then. The spinning in this game is so inconsistent. Sometimes you spin and hit your mark, and other times you just plain miss. And by miss, I mean you hit the damn TNT along with the box you intended to hit in the first place. I didn't think it would be uh, big enough to hit that other TNT. Okay. Let's take it easy. Take a deep breath. Let's say fuck you. Okay. Bye bye, wizard. <laughs> Funny thing is, uh, the wizards themselves, it's either them or a different variation of the wizard that we'll encounter. If, uh, if you spin into them, then, uh, they'll just, uh, they'll drop their pants or something. I think it was like that in the original US release and not in the PAL release. That was the other way around. Either way, it's not here in the Insane Trilogy, they just simply vanish. That or I'm thinking of a different enemy later. I'm not too sure. Either way... Oh, come on! Really? Really with that right now? Doing that shit to me? Haven't I suffered enough as is? 
God damn. There is one thing I have been uh, possibly thinking about lately. And I screwed myself up there. God damn it. Anyway, uh, I'll get back to that discussion in a minute. Right now we need to talk about this bonus stage. In this bonus stage, it seems relatively straightforward. However, there are a lot of just regular uh, wooden bouncing boxes that you need to keep around. And you need to keep them around in order to be able to grab all the boxes that are high above in the air. If you hit the wrong box at the wrong time, well then, unfortunately, <laughs> those rewards are basically null and void. And you would also have no way of accessing uh, all the boxes either on the stage. There we go. Other than a little bit of uh, experimentation and using the power of the double jump to its fullest capabilities here, uh, it's a pretty smooth ride and a pretty smooth stage, too. Okay, the other thing I wanted to mention during the bonus, bonus stage, but didn't get around to doing so because I was trying to explain its mechanics and everything, even so, let me go ahead and talk about that thing. I've been thinking about lately possibly uh, setting up the... Uh... Okay, not so much set up, but more so... Uh, I'm thinking about uh, possibly doing something to further enhance the stream setup. And that thing I'm talking about is not falling into a pit and dying after getting smacked by a freaking two-headed troll. Instead, what I'm talking about is possibly investing in a secondary streaming PC. However, I still need to do some research on the dual stream setup as far as that's concerned, because it sounds like it's uh, very complicated to get that up and running in order to figure all that out. I mean, it sounds like a simple premise. You just use uh, one PC to play PC games while you use your other secondary PC to encode and uh, stream everything. So, that sounds like a pretty easy thing to do. But, uh, I need to figure out uh, what kind of hardware do I need. Can I just get away with like a pre-built uh, $500-ish PC, or do I have to do I have to invest more than that? Who knows? Ah, you little vermin are way too stupid to understand what you're getting yourselves into. This time you've done it. What exactly have we done to piss this guy off? Well. <laughs> Eh, uh, well, the only thing that... Now you're on my time, you little skunk! Give me the crystals! How about no? <laughs> so, let's go ahead and fight Entrophy. Dr. Entrophy is a new antagonist for this game, and is one of the uh, additional bosses whom you will be fighting throughout the course of your adventure. And Trophy is also a reoccurring character in the Crash series as well, and not just uh, in the original trilogy. He also appeared in, like, uh, I believe in uh, Wrath of Cortex, and another game, I'm not really 100% sure what game that is exactly. But anyway, this boss fight is another very easy one. 
Just wait for N Trophy to shoot his uh, projectile like uh, weapons at you. Try not to get zapped. Like I did like a freaking idiot. <coughs> <coughs> and also jump over these uh, beams of light, I guess. I don't even know what they are, but they're beams. They're very annoying. And you just have to jump over them. After you jump over them, then Dr. N Trophy will then, uh, they'll then create some new platforms for you. Okay, that was bullshit, and you know a game. Absolute bullshit. I jumped over that. So as I was trying to say before I got the uh, bullshit on again, after you jump, after you jump over uh, N Trophy's obstacles, he'll uh, create a new path for you to get to him. You just gotta wait for him to just gotta wait for him to finish doing these things here. Wait for the light beams to just come flying by. Just do double jumps over everything and you should be okay. And there we are. Down to one more hit. And then we should be good to go here. So, there is one other thing that's worth noting. And that is those uh, bullet-like projectiles that Entropy fires at you. There is a way of telling whether or not they're going to be flying above you or below you. If it's orange, it's below. If it's blue, it's above. My time is up, but yours soon will be too. <laughs> Whatever you say, dude. Whatever you say. So, after defeating N Trophy, you get access to the Death Tornado Spin. By far the best move to have in this entire freaking game. Combine this with the double jump and you'll be able to cross great distances quite easily. So, there we go. There we freaking go. To use the tornado spin, just simply mash the X button repeatedly and you'll be able to create a spend that lasts about as long as the Tasmanian Devil from the Looney Tunes. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not that long, but still. You insult, insignificant morons! By defeating Entropy, you have placed us all in grave danger! Ugh. Crash, Coco, you must realize that this time twister machine is very delicate. Without Dr. Entropy's constant care and control, who knows what it will do? Mm, you should have thought of that before challenging us, Cortex. <laughs> Just saying. You shouldn't have did that. Okay, now that that's done, it's time to head on over to the next uh, portal set time period. And that is Ancient Egypt. So with that, let's head into the Sphinxinator. And it looks like our host for this time period is Engine. And in the Spacenator level, there are two clear gems and, of course, the crystal itself. Let's dive right on in and begin the fun. So, in order to get the second clear gem, we do need the blue gem from another level. And immediately, we're thrown directly into a roadblock of sorts. There's, of course, the path on the left and the path on the right. Also, that was bullshit. Okay, let's try that again now. Please. So anyway, to utilize the Death Tornado spin to its fullest, you need to jump as high as you possibly can into the air and then start mashing the X button straight away. Okay. And with that, we've already reached the end of the first path. 
And this is the first uh, level to introduce a uh, cool new uh, mechanic that was brought into Crash Bandicoot War. And that is Steel Crate Themed Checkpoints, or Steel Crate Checkpoints, goddammit. They act just like regular checkpoint boxes, just spin into them. Come on, man! Why does touching them automatically kill me? Doesn't make any sense. But anyway, as I was uh, trying to say before, steel crate checkpoints act just like regular checkpoints. The difference, of course, is that the once you activate the checkpoint, then the steel crate remains. Also, screw the camera, man. If you want to make backtracking a little bit easier on yourself, proceed at a slower pace and just utilize the Death Tornado spin to your advantage. Category 5, huh. Sweet, new achievement. Wonder what that was about. Also, come on game. How was I supposed to know there was a pit immediately after? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're already back at the beginning of the level. That's neat. Well, at least I didn't have to go as far back as I initially thought. But, of course, there's still the matter of getting through the rest of the stage and making it to the next checkpoint without dying, of course. Which, of course, is a lot easier said than done. Step at a time. Phew. Okay. So far, so good. Like I said, this can uh, take a little bit of time, and uh, of course, it requires a lot of patience in order to get through a stage like this and also as you can see there is a, a platform here where you will need the blue gem in order to take its alternate path but for right now though I don't think we need the blue gem for the time being of course we will get our hands on the blue gem later on but right now though we just need to concentrate on getting through the rest of this mad house this Egyptian themed mad house <laughs> That is known as the sphinx <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's trying to make a Terminator reference. Possible. That is possible. It's a possibility. Not saying it isn't. <coughs> hmm. Okay. Here we go. I did not mean to spin away that extra life. <laughs> I meant to grab it. By the way, for whatever reason, you cannot combine the double jump along with the uh, super belly flop. Why you can't do that, I have no idea. I don't know if it was like that in the original either. But, uh, how did I live? Well, granted, I did, uh, lose a mask because of that crap. 
still though. Still, it is a bit of a mystery to me. But, I'm okay with that. Crap. Oof, last thing you need to do is get smacked around by a monkey. And there were four boxes I missed. Are you kidding me right now, game? Don't tell me those boxes are in the other route. Ugh. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'll worry about it later when uh, we're going back through the levels again. And we'll be going back through there at some point or another. Right now, though, we're heading into Bye Bye Birds. Invert your vehicle controls in the options menu. Hmm, that sounds like something I'm going to need to do. So, yes and yes. Alright, so welcome to, f to the first of several flying levels in this game. During the flying levels, your primary objective is uh, indicated before you. And... The primary objective for these stages is just to take out a certain number of objects. You do have a health meter as indicated in the lower left hand corner. You can restore your health by uh, flying around the level and finding health crates. This is the only time or the, these flying levels are the only levels in the entire game where you can find health crates. As they would serve no other purpose elsewhere. Just saying. Anyway, if you want to get through these uh, stages smoothly and with your butt intact, you're going to want to barrel roll like crazy. The wise words of Peppy Hair even seep through Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Who knew, am I right? Anyway, to barrel roll, just simply push the A button. Or whatever the equivalent button is on whatever controller that you're using. And there we go. That's both the crystal and gem right there in one fell swoop. <laughs> huh, Frankie Jacep. Hmm. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Also, welcome to the stream. I'm glad you were able to stop by. We were having a bit of a hard time with one of the uh, earlier uh, crash motorcycle levels, but thankfully that's past us for right now. We will have to come back later at a different point. But uh, as of right now, though, we have other levels that we need to do. So let's get right back into the swing of things and tell no tales. Oh, crash Bandicoot, we meet again. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex want me to teach you a lesson. Well, I made a few modifications to my mechanics since our last encounter. <laughs> so back off or be deleted. <laughs> uh, are you sure about that? Hmm. And the hint for this stage is that, uh, it's telling you if you're lost, just follow the yellow arrow on the top of the screen. It'll tell you exactly where to go. So welcome to technically what is supposed to be the second jet ski level of this game. Well, technically speaking, we earlier uh, went to Hot Coco, which was also a very, very difficult uh, jet ski level. <laughs> It was difficult for all the wrong reasons. Okay, what? Seriously? Killed by a freaking seagull. <laughs> Is there any worse way to die in a Crash Bandicoot game? <laughs> uh, death by seagull. <laughs> Am I right? Damn it. <laughs> wow. Uh, falling underwater. How?
Okay, let's not get blasted, please. Thank you. So when it comes to uh, these Coco levels here, I guess what you could do is just simply take your time and just wait for the proper time to strike certain boxes. Those ones being the ones that seagulls love to sit on and camp on all day long. Okay. Nothing else over here, then. I think this is the first level where uh, you're presented with um, multiple paths that you can choose to take if you so desire. And look, they're adding the levels over there. Unfortunately, we can't quite go there as of yet. We have to follow the rest of this buoy path until we reach the end. Why? Because invisible walls. <laughs> That's really about it, really. As weird as that may sound, it's actually true. Okay, and before we proceed... Okay. Nothing else to go Just wanted to be sure. You never know if you may end up finding something that uh, you may end up uh, regretting not getting later. There is one other thing that's worth noting too, and that is when you're jumping off of ramps for whatever reason, uh, there's no engine sound in the uh, Insane Trilogy. In fact, there's no, hardly any engine sound whatsoever in this uh, Insane Trilogy in general. Whereas in the original, you would uh, hear the engines roar all proud and majestic like you know? Invisible walls. I know. <laughs> Aren't they just the best? Hmm. Okay, I believe for this, there are a couple of different ways you can go about this, but if you want to go for all the boxes in the stage, you want to go this way first. So that way you can get all the boxes that are around this pirate ship here. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Once you get all the boxes here, then you can just proceed on to the other path. Of course, you can still just come over here just to grab a few boxes and other goodies if you really need them. And then proceed on your jolly old way. You can do that too. But if you're going for all the boxes, you do have to go over there. Just figure I'd throw that out there. There is another fun fact about this stage in particular, and that is... If you happen to play the original Spyro the Dragon, there is a uh, hidden demo within the game itself. If you happen to enter a certain button combination, and then... Uh, if you have to enter a certain button combination, you can play through a level in Crash Bandicoot Warp for the original PlayStation. Another fun fact I feel like throwing out there too is that the, in the original Crash Bandicoot Warp, if you enter the same button combination, you can play a demo of Spyro the Dragon, believe it or not. However, with the Insane Trilogy being a thing, um, the only thing the combination will uh, give you now is access to the reveal trailer for Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, which you can easily look up online. No, I'm serious. That was patched in, like, uh, quite a while ago. Like, over a year ago, to be exact. So it wasn't really fixing much of anything. It was just adding in that uh, little extra thing. Alright, on to the next level. Future Frenzy! Hmm. Ain't that the truth? 
I was pointing that out earlier. Okay, welcome to the first of several future themed levels in this game. Future Frenzy. Uh, oh my, excuse me. Okay. I don't even know what I was trying to say before, but uh, anyway, we're here. Welcome to the future! <laughs> Future! Future! <laughs> uh, let me know in the chat if you got that reference. <laughs> yes, yeah, so did I. I didn't know about the Spyro demos for quite a long time either. So, there you go. I really wish you could play like a, at least a demo level of uh, the Spyro Reignited Trilogy and the Crash and Sane Trilogy. Maybe that will be patched in when the Reignited Trilogy gets released on PS4. I don't know. That would be a pretty sweet treat. But, uh... Going Activision, since they technically own both of the Spyro and Crash IPs and stuff, that probably won't happen unless they want to charge you like uh, $60 to pay for a season pass that you don't need and then have like a 0.000000000000000000 to the Infinity plus 1% chance of actually getting the Spire Reignited Trilogy demo from a supply drop while having to face having to deal with a bunch of other crap where you could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and still not get what you want. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not making that up. <laughs> well, maybe not in the same sort of context, but uh, yeah, they are pretty infamous for that kind of kind of uh, business practice. There is one other new uh, platform that uh, I didn't really talk about as we were going about the stage. You may have noticed certain uh, platforms that were green and kind of looked like they were spinning in a sense, or just spinning in general. Well, those uh, platforms, as soon as we encounter one, we'll definitely talk about them again. Then again, maybe we won't uh, see another one in the stage. Who knows? Yep. Gotta love Activision. <laughs> uh, one of the most greedy corporations next to EA. Anyway, here's that platform I was talking about. It's a fan platform. Jump on it and it automatically activates the tornado spin at the maximum height possible. In the original... It would, uh, just, uh, the Tornado Spin would last for its entire duration, but in the Insane Trilogy, that's not the case. How did I miss so many freaking boxes? You know what, forget it. Not gonna worry about that now. I'm gonna have to worry about it another time. Uh, God damn. There was probably some backtracking that I completely forgot about. Mm. Dang it. Okay. Also, is it me or do levels take longer to load in this time around when uh, in the Time Twister as opposed to the original where you step on the switch and it activates almost right away? Here, not so much more like you gotta wait at least a second or two. Also, how did I screw that up? Okay. Welcome to the next Egyptian themed level. Within this place, we now have to deal with water. Ooh, water. 
What's so scary about water? Well, if anyone has played any of the Crash games, you know that Crash and Coco cannot swim at all. So if they fall into uh, any sort of uh, deep water, they immediately start to drown. Okay. There's also the opportunity where we can earn the blue gem here. However, I do have a feeling that uh, in order to earn the blue gem, we need to do the death route in the stage that's hidden somewhere. And reaching the death route is not going to be easy at all. Not by any means. <laughs> uh, that was so stupid of me. I should have waited. Should have waited to activate that dang uh, steel box. Because this is another one of those stages where the steel box placement is a bit of a... It's a bit of a dick. If you hit the steel box and activate the other ones and activate the steel bridges at the wrong time, then what happens is certain boxes will be completely blocked off. So, say for example, these boxes here. If you activate the steel crate that's all the way up here, you'll activate the You'll solidify the Nitro Crate Bridge. That's not really something you really want to activate right away if you want the other boxes. You want to hold off until you uh, bust open all the necessary boxes. And afterwards, hit the Steel Crate, activate the Nitro Crate Bridge, hit the TNT, and then you will be good to go from there. Oh god, how I needed this. Oh god. There's also a pretty funny uh, death animation if you happen to get killed by that uh, particular mummy who's just jumping around on the... It looks like a death trap. It's literally like a sarcophagus with spikes on it. Oh dear lord, that was way too close. Okay, here we go. Death route time, folks. Time for the death route. Here's where things really start to get interesting. Not only will you have to race against the uh, time, you have to you also have to fully utilize your newly acquired uh, power-ups to their fullest. And you also have to use a combination of sliding and using a lot of very quick movement in such a short time frame. If you're not quick enough to the draw, then unfortunately you're going to drown. Just gonna wait for the water to rise and begin its descent. Here we go. So all I can say about the death route in particular is play it safe as much as humanly possible. Ah, damn it. Well, at least the good news is we can retry the death route as many times as we want. So long as we've touched it and activated it. As long as we activated the death route and attempted it at least once, we can try it as many times as we please. <sighs> Definitely not a fan of this uh, death route, that's for sure. Not a fan of any of them, to be honest. But that's just me. Uh, 
I believe it is possible to get through uh, this particular death route without waiting around all that much. But, uh... If you don't want to wait around, well, uh, unfortunately, this is not really the route for you. I have no words to describe what the hell just happened there. That is so a highlight right there. Uh, mobile dashboard, please. I am putting a stream marker right here or somewhere around this point. Uh, okay, stream marker. Where do I put stream markers? Uh, here we go. That works. All right, let's try this again. I know, same exact reaction. <laughs> oh, this game, I swear to God, is out to get me. Just because I was a little too clever with my movement. Oops. Okay, so note to self. If you touch the bottom of uh, those collapsible doors, you die instantly. Whether they're high above the sky and the ceiling, or they're at the very bottom of the ground. <laughs> No sense. Yeah. You're too good. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh my god. Wait, are you serious? That's not gonna open now? Okay. Hmm. Well, that was bullshit. In every sense of the word. Okay, why can't I jump a moment there? I'm surprised I even made it back alive. I know, right? <laughs> oh, the panic was real right there. <laughs> That's for sure. Excuse me, game. What the hell was that shit? I swear to God, this death route has been the glitchiest of all death routes I've ever done in any of the Crash games in this entire trilogy. One glitch after another from uh, getting crushed somehow while in the air from drowning in the, like, literal, in a puddle of water and other weird ass shenanigans such as switches not activating even though I'm spinning into them multiple times over <sighs> oh no indeed I will say this, at least the music uh, for the death route is very fitting for a situation such as this. By the way, the death tornado will save you so many frickin' uh, times you have no idea. But, here we go! 
Death route complete. Whee! <laughs> There's a reason for my madness. How did I live? The reason why I even did that is because I believe it's possible to get both the clear gem, crystal, as well as the blue gem that is here. If you manage to break open all the boxes in the stage, and thankfully there are no boxes in the death round. Nothing but steel boxes and like. Other than those, no other boxes were there. Okay, question. How is it that guy is not drowning right now? Perhaps the reason why is because he's so tall he's able to just uh, hang out in the water. <laughs> huh. You didn't know that you can uh, get the color gem as well as the clear gem in the same run? Yeah, I didn't know that either until recently. Okay, I know the warrant's gonna fill up any second. Yep, kind of know. Now, when it comes to sections like these where you're constantly uh, waiting for the water to rise and descend, just play it safe. Take it one step at a time. Little by little, piece by piece. Are you freaking kidding me? I missed a box in this stage? Where did I miss a box? Okay, now that's bugging the shit out of me. Now I want to go back in and do that level again. But it doesn't look like I'm... Yep, not able to do that right now until I defeat Engine. Which should be a simple enough task. Okay. Since I can't really go back into the level just yet until I fight Engine, let's do it. Dr. Engine is going down. So, <laughs> you want to go with you when this is over, we'll see who is obsolete. <laughs> Indeed. Dodging keeps you safe, but makes it harder to aim. Well, no duh. Alright, welcome to the engine fight. In this particular fight, Coco is the one who fights Dr. Engine. So in this fight... This fight is broken up into two separate phases. The first phase, you just uh, blast open these uh, weak points here, little by little, piece by piece, and uh, pray to God you don't get shot down first. Which is a lot easier said than done. Given the fact that these controls are, uh, well, they are uh, changed from the original. Not very much, though. So really, again, you just gotta shoot these uh, different uh, weapon ports as they're being fired at you, and even the middle piece as well here. Once you destroy all the pieces, the second phase of the fight will begin. And you can take a lot of damage pretty easily too if you're not careful. There we go. First phase down, on to the second. This is where shit really kicks into frickin' overdrive. Because now your little tiger friend joins in for the second phase of the fight, increasing your firepower. But at the same time, Engine's firepower is also increased greatly. And in the original, if you die during the second phase of the fight, you have to redo the first phase all over again. So that is something to keep in mind. So all I can say about this uh, fight is keep moving, 
and just hold down the fire button and never, ever let go. Never let go of the fire button for any reason. Just keep firing and eventually you will win the day. Another pretty easy fight overall, but again, it just... This is probably one of the harder fights in the entire game, and it's probably one of the most fun, too. It takes place in outer space. The first phase, you're on the frickin' moon. And then in the second phase, uh, you're higher above the moon. And there we go. After defeating Engine, you are awarded the Fruit Bazooka. The fire... Okay, well, the instructions just popped up immediately, and you can't really read them until you warp back. <laughs> well, either way, you, you, you just uh, hold down one of the triggers. I believe it's the left trigger. It's funny how history repeats itself. Yet again, Engine has failed to defeat you. <laughs> For this, we must destroy you! <coughs> oh, my aching head. I'm not feeling myself these days. So, the end is in sight. Gather another five crystals, and again you will have foiled my plan. Or will you? Hmm. Looks like he has a little something in mind as a failsafe. Well, before we head off to the final uh, set of levels, I'm going back to Tomb Waiter. <laughs> I just realized this is called Tomb Waiter. Rash, Coco, if you have already retrieved a Neville's crystal, then you will find a floating clock when you enter for the second time. This floating clock activates time trial mode. Grab it, and the clock will start ticking. Race for the end to get the best time. But beware, some elements will change. Hmm. Well, that's the... That's basically time trials in a nutshell when it comes to this particular game. Some elements of the level will change upon entering time trial mode. But for right now though, we just uh... We're still in need of the frickin' box gem that I somehow completely missed out on. I don't even know how I missed the frickin' gem the first time around. I'm gonna drown. Okay. Okay. Just gotta be a little more vigilant and hopefully we won't have some extreme bull crap shoved down our throats. We should be fine. Again, this shouldn't take too long to complete. Now that we know exactly what we're doing here... Oops. Didn't mean to do that, but that's fine. The good news is, now that we know exactly how to go about this stage, this should uh, make uh, getting lives easier and holding on to them easier as well. So hopefully we can uh, rack up some additional lives before we head off to the final uh, major area before, uh, before long. Even though I've been going on for over three hours now, I kind of want to finish the main game this evening. So that way, when I come back and finish things up and clean everything else up, collecting all the remaining gems as well as the relics, I, I can just do that and maybe even finish the game. Tom not tomorrow, but... Uh, not tomorrow, but more so uh, Saturday when I stream it. Also, that extra light box that I just hit, I feel like, uh... 
I feel like that box was the one box that I missed. Oh, thank you for the boost. <laughs> okay, so far so good. One thing I will definitely mention in that I will mention is while you're going through many of these stages in the game, there are going to be instances where it's a better idea to just ignore the enemy than it is to just simply take it on. Sometimes it's just not worth the trouble. If you pick on the wrong enemy at the wrong time, then you're going to end up getting screwed over in the worst ways possible. And sometimes it may even cost you precious time. This is especially important when we get into the time trials later. There we go. That's more like it. That's the box gem for the stage. And thank God that didn't take like 10 million years to collect. Okay. So with that done, it's time for the final set of levels in the entire game. Pretty much. Excluding the secret levels. The secret levels I will be getting into later on. And as you can see, despite us being nearly at the end of the game, we're only at 44% completion. We still got a ways to go. So, let's head into the next level. Gone tomorrow. Let's do this. Hmm. A new path by earning the green gem elsewhere. Hmm. That sounds interesting and quite fun. Okay, so... In order to pull out the bazooka, you need to hold the left trigger. And in order to fire, hit the either right bumper or the B button on Xbox. The bazooka can be fired from quite a distance away. Useful for taking out enemies or other obstacles at a distance. Like this guy right here. Another way you can take him out is just going up close and personal like as soon as he reveals to you its uh, targeting point. Just fire at him and uh, you should be fine. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean. There you go. Just give him a good whack. If you're going to be pulling out this uh, fruit bazooka, it's best to do this from a, as far of a distance as you possibly can. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that the bazooka itself, as versatile as it is, does have a limited range. It only can it can only fire so far before it just uh, doesn't allow you to fire any further. By the way, if the targeting cursor is red, then that means you're going to be able to hit something. However, if it's yellow, then it's not going to be hitting much of anything at all. Funny thing is, you can even hit the Wumpa Fruit from a distance too, and you can collect them that way. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. There's a box, like, way up here. Okay, I think I know what it is that you have to do. At some point in the level, you're going to have to backtrack until you reach this platform here. So, in a sense, you want to do some checkpoint manipulation. So, instead of hitting this checkpoint here, ignore it and come back later. By the way, it is possible to use the fruit bazooka in 2D sections such as these, but it's wiser to just uh, not do that. Damn it!
Eh, crap. I should have saved that for later. Otherwise, I probably would not be able to hit that. Oh, well, dang it. One nice thing about the fruit bazooka is that since you can use it from a distance, you can also use it as a means of uh, act setting off the TNT as well as nitro crate boxes too. So if you see a bunch of nitro crates or boxes and other things that are just standing in your way and there's no way to get past them, just simply shoot them from a distance. That's one reason why I absolutely love the Fruit Bazooka. It's like the ultimate sniper weapon. Just wish you can use it in like Call of Duty World War II. <laughs> in which case you can bloop on kids all day long and shoot them with fruit. Okay, there should have been uh, some sort of a steel uh, crate or something that I could have shot or something or spun into. One of those things. I mean, should have been able to hit something to have uh, made some of the blocks solid. Question is, where the hell is this thing? Okay, it doesn't look like you can go back after all. Huh. Unless I missed something obvious. If that's the case, then let's just go back through just to be sure. After I unfreeze the damn camera. Excuse me. There we go. All fixed. Back to the game now. Okay. Let's try this again. Hopefully with more success and less bullshit. Like getting crushed for no reason. That would be great. By the way, when it comes to uh, this uh, Insane Trilogy, there is a certain achievement that you can get with the Fruit Bazooka, and that is hitting a certain background object in a certain level. It's one of the future levels for sure, but uh, as far as this one, I don't think this is one of them. The achievement I'm talking about is... Uh, you should be able to aim into the background and fire at a UFO. If you manage to hit the UFO, then you get an achievement. I don't know if that particular thing is here or if it's in another level. Pretty sure it's another level that I'm thinking of. I keep thinking that the fire button is the X button for some reason. Seems like the X button would be the most convenient place to put one of the put a fire button in it. But instead it's actually either the B button or the right trigger. get this box right now until later? 
Oh, that can't be right. I should be able to fire at some sort of steel crate or something here. Hmm. I don't know. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go ahead and move on. Doesn't look like there's going to be any way I can get all the boxes in the stage anyway right now. Maybe that's for later, or that's just going to be one of those things where I'm going to have to look up what it is I have to do. That's fine. I don't mind having to look things up every now and again. Heck, I did just earlier on in the stream with Hot Coco. Because that frickin' stage was so open-ended. The stage was so open-ended that, uh... You can approach the stage in any way that you see fit. And that's both a benefit as well as a detriment. How is that exactly? Well, if you were here earlier, you would have known. But if you have uh, played the game before yourself, you know exactly what it is I'm talking about. Either way, if you missed that part, then don't worry. You'll be able to see it again when this goes up on YouTube later. Maybe not later this evening, because <laughs> it's going to take some time to work on uh, proper edits and fix everything up that needs to be edited and get everything back up and running or get everything edited up and uh, rendered and then uploaded which is gonna take some time god damn it sweet combo Damn it, game. By the way, there is a death animation that's unique to Crash when it comes to these spikes. It doesn't happen with Coco. Instead, she just uses the usual death animation. And that is just uh, flying around as if there was like a hole in a balloon. Why? Because spikes are sharp. Okay, not too much more of this level is left to go. There is another fun fact that I have not mentioned yet. God damn it. And that is... When it comes to this game in particular... Often whenever I see highlights on like Glad Jonas or uh, speedrun fails that uh, involve speedrunners uh, speedrunning the game, the only thing they have going, other than uh, their webcam and the timer and stuff, is that the uh, in-game music is the only thing that plays. The sound effects are completely shut off. And I have to ask, why is that? Why is it that speedrunners shut off sound effects and yet let the music play? There's probably some technical reasons as to why, like maybe sound effects cause the game to lag like one frame less per second, as opposed to target 30. I do not know. Your guess is as good as mine at this point. And yeah, as you can see, there's like 17 boxes that we missed in this stage somehow. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. I'm sure we'll be able to figure that out once we get our hands on the green gem. After I fix my webcam again. God damn it. I swear to God, I need to get myself a uh, Elgato Stream Deck. Whether it be a Stream Deck original or a mini, either one will work. So that way... Whenever this shit does happen, I can immediately turn off the webcam and turn it back on again. That way I don't have to exit out of the game every time. 
Okay, on to the next motorcycle level, Orange Asphalt. <laughs> Ooh, sounds fun. Hopefully it won't drive me up a goddamn wall like the last one did. <laughs> uh, hmm, never knew. Okay. Alright, time for the third motorcycle race. Just like before, there's only a small number of boxes throughout the stage, and you need to proceed through the round a certain way in order to bust open all the boxes, as well as get your hands on the crystal. And I completely screwed that up. Well, god damn it. I'm gonna have to say screw the gem for now and come back for it later. Because if you miss the gem even once, I mean, miss a single box, then, uh, unfortunately, you would have to exit out of the stage and reload it in order to get another chance at the box gem. So, one big difference between the last motorcycle level and this one is that the police cars, they now move from, uh, left to right in a set pattern. They are set that way basically forever. Back and forth, back and forth, all the time until the cows come home. That's the way they are, that's the way they roll. Also, that was bullshit. Get out of my way, imbecile. Thank you. Hmm, I wonder how getting the gem on this stage is going to be possible. That's a pretty big question that's worth asking right about now. There we go. Got the crystal at least. So that's good. However, we still need to go back in in order to get the frickin' box gem. Ugh. That's going to be real fun. I mean, one thing you could do if you're going after the box gem is intentionally throw the race and just concentrate on going after the box gem. And then worry about uh, coming back another time. Okay. Let's go ahead and try this stage again. Hopefully this time we'll be able to bust open all the boxes and get the gem. I really, really wish there was a way for you to just be able to instantaneously restart any racing stage. With the simple start, pushing the start button, and uh, selecting reset. You're able to do that when you're in the time trial, but not during the regular run of the stage. Instead... You pretty much uh, have to play the stage perfectly in order to get all the boxes. So, yeah, that's real fun. And again, if you mess a single box, you gotta restart the entire stage, exit out, re-enter. Alright, I think for the rest of this, I'm gonna be playing as Crash. Just so that way we can get through some of these stages more quickly. Now watch the freaking camera's gonna freeze again. Okay, maybe not now, but uh, probably later. Okay, here we go. By the way, if you try to initiate time trial mode and you still manage to break open all the boxes, you will still not be able to get your hands on the box gem until you exit out of time trial mode. And the only way to exit out of time trial mode is to uh, is to simply hit restart or complete the stage. So one other thing that's worth noting too is if you uh, are going after all the boxes and going for the box gem. Try going about the stage in a slow and steady fashion. Take it slow, take your time. 
ignore the other racers as much as humanly possible. Uh, try to avoid the boost pads, too. This way, you don't end up accidentally sliding right on by one of the boxes by mistake. And again, take every turn nice and slow. Release the accelerator, and you should be able to make the turn without much of a problem. You could also hit the brakes, too, to help you out, too, but, uh, I find that the brakes are not all that useful in this game. They're really not. Are you kidding me right now? Wow. Screw you, game. Screw you. All because I slipped up. I slipped and fell into the hole, and so it respawned me past the box. That is so freaking stupid. Okay, let's try this again now with better performance, please. Here we go. How many attempts have we done up to this point for collecting all the boxes now? I'm gonna guess like three or four attempts up to this point. I've honestly lost track. Heck, I wasn't even keeping track in the first place. Okay. <laughs> hmm. The hell was what? I didn't notice anything. Goddamn copper. <laughs> Funny thing is, when it comes to the cops in this uh, game, they don't pull you over or try to stop you. The only thing they do is act like roadblocks. That's it. That's really the worst thing they do in this game. It's not like they force you to stop and give you a ticket or arrest you or anything. No. <laughs> it's not like other racing games like Need for Speed where that is indeed the case. But, again, in Crash, all they do is act like roadblocks. That's it. Much further now. There we are. Oh my god. Excellent. Got all the boxes. And there we go. That's the box gem. Phew! <laughs> Pitfall. Interesting. Very interesting. Speaking of pitfall, there's a pretty interesting glitch that you can pull off, and that is if you keep going out of bounds with like the no gem unturned. Not sure how I got that. Probably from uh, collecting so many gems up until this point. There's still the matter of a. Uh, like three more clear gems from the main levels make that four or more okay okay let's head into the next level flaming passion in this level there's of course the crystal clear gem and there's also the green gem so once again this is another one of those levels that has a death route uh, excuse me fantastic If you want to get to the death route in one piece, one thing you can definitely do is 
Utilize your powers to their absolute limit. Push it as hard as you possibly can. Use them to not only safely traverse across gaps, but also deal with certain enemies and obstacles. And use the Death Tornado as a means of... Just slowing yourself down. Don't proceed too quickly throughout the stage, and you should be okay. Okay, just wait for Mr. Ninja Guy to throw his frickin' Molotov cocktail. There we are. Not too much further now to the death rail route, I hope. Oh my god. Oh! Too close. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, we made it. Finally made it to the death route, folks. In this death route, we uh, obviously have a lot of really difficult obstacles to traverse. Not only that, we also have steel-plated checkpoints. So because of that, we now have checkpoints in this death route in particular. Upon activation, you're stuck here. So if you wanted to go for all the boxes as well as the... Uh, gem in this stage, you can't hit, hit any of the steel checkpoints throughout the entire run of the death route. Okay, well that was kind of pointless then. Never mind, you can still get the clear gem here too. Just complete it. Complete the death route and you're fine. Once you complete the death route, you're only just slightly ahead from where you previously were. See? Here's the death route entrance right here. So honestly, it's not even that far. God damn it. Ah, dang it. Well, unfortunately, since we died... Before reaching the next checkpoint, we will have to recomplete the death route in order to escape from it again. And of course, I would fall right through the environment. It ain't Crash and Sane Trilogy without glitches. Just saying. <laughs> like the game's already insane enough. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay. Thankfully, the gem is still collected even after completing the death route. So as long as you collected it, you should still be fine. Just again, if you're going for the clear gem in this stage, don't forget to head backwards and bust open these uh, other boxes that are back here. And then make your way back. Thankfully the checkpoint is right like right after the death route's completion. Just gotta jump over this. I don't even. How did he hit me? I, I barely touched like the very tip of his hat. And yet he still killed me somehow. Dang it, man. Well, whatever. It's okay. We can just simply go back the way we came and do all this shit again. It's not a problem. This is fine. Just gotta take our time.
go. I'm surprised that he didn't kill me there. Even though he kind of did before, just saying. <laughs> How he did not kill me now, I have no idea. Whatever, I'm happy. So freaking happy that I managed to live through that and see the next full moon. <laughs> Alright, onward to the next bonus stage. I keep forgetting about my fruit bazooka. Why don't I use that more? for those for those bouncing boxes in order to bust them open and be able to get through the rest of the stage safely what you have to do <laughs> I kind of did too up until I uh, until I came back to the stage and realized oh wait yeah I could shoot shit from a distance Anyway, as I was trying to say earlier, if you want to get through this section safely, what you have to do is just jump over the gap and then fire your bazooka backwards. And then, boom! Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze. There we go! Bonus level done. Funny enough, the fruit bazooka can be used very e to very easily cheese these sections. Why didn't I think of using it earlier when it mattered the most? Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I sure love making things harder on myself for no reason. There we go. That's everything in the level pretty much minus the relic. And of course the freaking camera froze again. Dang it. I'm going to have to look into this for, like, future streams. So that way this doesn't keep happening all the frickin' time. There we go. Boom. Boom. And boom. Okay, that level is done. For now, anyway. Now it's time for the next one. Mad Bombers! This is another one of those flying levels. Crash, Coco. Remember, it is not only Dr. Cortez that we battle. Beware of Uka Uka, my children. He is a far more dangerous enemy than anyone can imagine. Huh. Speak for yourself. So, here we go. Time for the second flying level of this game, and certainly not the last. So, just like before, we just gotta shoot down the bombers, and also take out all the boxes that are in the stage, too. Once again, the flight controls are the exact same for Crash as they were for Coco. Just fly around, and push the A button to do barrel rolls, hold the X button to fire, your primary machine gun weapon that has practically infinite ammo. Never stop firing, no matter what. Okay, why did I stop firing there? What the hell? That was weird. It was like my gun overheated or something. <clears throat> anyway, in this stage, there are five bombers that you have to take out. Thankfully, the bomb bombers themselves are clearly indicated by 
means of the lower right hand corner of the screen and they also stick out like a sore thumb they're big big targets that you just shoot and they should go down with a, with a little bit of extra firepower the smaller targets however spawn infinitely it will keep flying at you and try to shoot you down no matter what so when they start coming after you start mashing the a button and do barrel rolls non-stop and again, if you're running low on health at any time, just hit the health crates, and you should be able to get your health back, no problem. Okay, we're up to... Alright, one box left. Thankfully, the bo last box is just over here. Just gotta be sure to time it just right, so I can uh, not only shoot down... Uh, last couple of bombers here, but also grab the box jam, which I just did, and bada bing bada bing. Also, I'm pretty sure these uh, ships are supposed to be uh, similar to uh, the planes also seen in, like, Nazi Germany, or something to that extent, except the, not the swastika is obviously replaced with the uh, Dr. Neo Cortex symbol because of egotistical, egotisticalism, if that's even a word. E anyway, it's a positive change. And it's suitable for a game like this. Simple as that. Hmm. Not bad, still a good stream. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I apologize for the some of the technical issues I've been experiencing as of uh, as of this evening. Again, this only seems to happen when it comes in between loading screens. And with the constant freezing of uh, my camcorder itself, again, it only happens in between loading screens of the Crash Bandicoot and Zane Trilogy. No other games I know of have this issue, as far as I'm aware. The only other problematic game I could probably think of that may have this issue is maybe Final Fantasy XV. But uh, other than that, that's about it. Okay, time to get into the main mechanic of this level. The whole light bug mechanic. So, you kind of have to race against the clock and uh, grab these fireflies as they're flying around the in the stage. Time picking them up absolutely perfectly, otherwise you're going to completely waste the uh, fireflies usage. Thankfully, the fireflies themselves, if, uh, if you get hit, then, uh, the firefly doesn't go away, but still, that doesn't mean you can let your guard down. Also, welcome to a new hidden route. In order to get here, you need the blue gem from another level. I believe for this level you need all the colored gems in order to proceed. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you need all of them. And I'm missing one colored gem, so this can be problematic. So you know what, I'm probably just going to say screw it and not worry about that particular path until later. Until after I collected the last colored gem that I'm still missing. So, yeah. Let's not worry about that now. And just proceed. Just proceed on more to the rest of the stage. Like I said, we'll come back later once we have everything else that we need. Here we go. Ooh. Triple Uka Uka mask time. Neat. 
I'm glad that they give you the opportunity to at least experience the triple mask invincibility thing at least once in this playthrough. And as you can see, with the power of invincibility, you'll be able to move through the stage a lot more quickly, naturally, without the need of power-ups or any sort of glitches or some other forms of advanced movement. You just move faster, and you can bust through basically anything and everything that stands in your way. Plus it gives you extra hits for later. And by the way, if the firefly ends up going out, or in other words, just flies away... Well, in this game, if it goes out, well then you're completely screwed and you're stuck in the dark. But in the, uh, in Crash Bandicoot 2, there was still enough light to allow you to see somewhat. It's just a lot harder to do so. But here, if you, uh, mess up, well then, unfortunately, you're kind of screwed. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, I need to approach uh, some sections with the uh, speed in mind. And pulling out the bazooka honestly is the best way of going about it, but I need to do it in a different way. I can never get through this section without, uh... Hmm. Well, that's neat. At least I was, uh, able to grab everything here somehow. Huh. And still make it to the end without blowing myself up first. Who knew that I could do that? That was sweet. Okay. Let's get through the rest of this now. Which should be a simple matter of... Dying! Of course! God damn it. Just can't jump into the gator's mouth, please. Okay. This level can be pretty stressful, especially with the uh, time management not exactly being on your side. Alright, there we go. There's the box gem. So that's sweet. At least that is done and out the way. So now we don't have to worry about the box gem necessarily in this level when we go through it again. But we still have the matter of the other gem, which we can only get once we have the other colored gems. Which is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, now that that's done, it's time to fight the final boss, Dr. Neo Cortex himself. We're up to 54% game completion, and right now it's going to get a little bit higher. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the part where I'm supposed to be angry. 
full of rage, incensed beyond belief. Once again, you have outsmarted and outspun my best henchmen. I should be rather upset, shouldn't I? And in fact, we are furious, but it seems we're going to require small detail and little orange delivery boy. Now that you have gathered all the crystals, all we have to do is take them from you. <laughs> You'll have to take them by force, buddy. <laughs> Okay, so it's time to fight Dr. Neo Cortex and Aku Aku. I mean, uh, Uka Uka. Crash Bandicoot for the last time. Give the whistles to me. Okay, here we go. So in this fight, Uka Uka as well as Aku Aku will be fighting each other in the background while you're also dealing with Dr. Neo Cortex. So, in this fight, you have to essentially multitask with dodging both uh, Cortex's projectiles, as well as uh, Aku Aku and Uka Uka's uh, fight. And during the fight, after Dr. Neo Cortex throw down, throws down his mind, after he throws down his mind, that's when his force field drops. In which case, that will be your opportunity to start smacking him into the middle of the arena. In which case, that will open right on up for you. Uh, also, goddammit. Uh. <sighs> Honestly, this fight right here is considered like the hardest fight in the entire game. And the whole reason why it's so damn difficult is multitasking between dodging both Uka Uka, Aku Aku, and Dr. Cortex himself as he's uh, throwing down all kinds of stuff at yeah. By the way, you only have a limited time to knock Neo Cortex off this little uh, surfing hoverboard. If you take too long, the shield will... His, his shield will pop right back up and you will have to restart that particular phase all over again. Just saying. It's not exactly something you want to do. Thankfully, uh... Whenever you're knocking uh, Neo Cortex around, the masks stop fighting temporarily until you uh, either run out of time or you smack Cortex into the hole. Now for the final part of this fight. In this part, the masks will start uh, homing into your exact location and create some sort of explosive uh, collision as they uh, fight each other. Honestly, I feel like this part is easier than uh, any of the other phases in the entire uh, fight. Just solely due to the fact that they're so predictable. And there we go. Cortex is done. And after defeating him, once again, we get the Speed Shoes. This is also uh, awarded to you after you beat him in Crash 2 in the Insane Trilogy. Also, thanks again, Frankie, for stopping by the stream and uh hopefully i'll see you again soon so anyway with the speed shoes we can run faster by holding down the right trigger so that is sweet that's that we're done here defeated again this is not fair maybe i should retire to a nice big beach with a nice big drink and a woman with nice Big bags of ice for my head. It's not over, Bandicoot. There are still the gems. We still have a chance to triumph. Mm. Well, that's true. There's still the gems that we still need to get. And just like I promised, I will go ahead and let these credits roll. 
because the credit roll, whether you beat the first game, the second game, or the third game, the credit roll is the exact same for all three games in the trilogy. So, there we go. That, as they say, is that. At least for the main game portion of the game. However, there is still the matter of retrieving all the missing gems that we still need to collect yet. And there's also the matter of time trials now. So, when it comes to time trials in this game, how this works is... In this game, in particular, in order to get the game's true ending, you have to collect at least the Sapphire Relic in all the levels, at least as far as I'm aware. Then again, maybe you're supposed to collect some Gold Relics and Platinum Relics along the way? I'm not too sure. But if you're going to be going the true completionist route, you're going to want to aim for gold or platinum. And if you're one of those insane people where it's platinum or nothing, you can go for them too. But as for me, I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing. I'm pretty... I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going for at least the gold relic in each stage. If I can get Platinum, great. If I can't, then I can't. But still, I will uh, try to get at least a Gold Relic in each stage. Sapphire is not going to be satisfactory enough for me. And that's just for me. Because there is an achievement in the PS4, Xbox One, and PC versions of the game where if you get a Gold Relic or better in each and every stage, whether you're playing one of the three Crash games or not, then you will be awarded an achievement. The, these achievements and more are excluded from the Switch version for obvious reasons. They don't have achievements. And I don't think they will ever implement achievements. Unless for some reason they're able to patch in, like, in-game achievements of sorts. So if players, uh play through the game and earn achievements in game just to show off to their friends then that would be awesome in game achievements are fine I mean achievements are achievements no matter what whether they benefit you or not trust me we have seen uh, achievements in Nintendo games before with like Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 okay not Xenoblade Chronicles 2 but more so Xenoblade Chronicles X is what I meant to say. But I'm just saying, it is possible to implement achievements in Nintendo games. It's just, uh, they have to be in-game achievements, not so much, uh, actual achievements like, uh, on Xbox Live and, uh, PlayStation Network. It's more so complicated than that. Just saying. But, uh, anyway, like I said, as of uh, completing this credit roll, you will be uh, booted back to uh, the uh, Time Twister Warp Room. Uh, excuse me. And upon uh, re-entering the place, you can now take on any levels that you see fit. Just, again, go after all the gems that you can possibly grab. Grab everything that you can, grab all the colored gems, and then... After all the gems have been collected, then it would probably be wise to then start going after the relics. But then again, in order to access certain levels, you need a certain number of relics in order to access them. And you would also need to uh, access uh, other levels via secret exits. The only secret exit I know of was with Hot Coco, with uh, the one the second crash motorcycle level by crashing into the alien sign. All other secret exits are a bit of a mystery to me at this very moment. That may have been the only secret exit that there is in this game, but then again there's probably some others that I am completely unaware of or I completely forgot about. Either way, we'll find that out soon enough after we uh, proceed onward to the next part of the game. But we're not going to be doing that this evening. 
I have been going on for well over four hours and five minutes now. Just about now. Yeah, four hours and five minutes in this session alone. There's just, there's going to be quite a bit of uh, editing that will need to be done. That includes the, uh, the second uh, motorcycle level with Crash. Also, cutting out, uh, searching for that uh, one uh, crate in Hot Cocoa. And that's really about it. There's also just editing the beginning parts of the stage just a little bit. And that's really about it. There is still the matter of creating the highlight for tonight's stream. <laughs> Uh, I'll probably do that, uh, I'll probably do that during the editing phase of this. So long as I can get the gameplay footage to cooperate with my video editing software. But, uh, we'll have to wait and see how things turn out. If I can bring it into Vegas or, uh, Adobe Premiere and, uh, get them to work properly, then this should be smooth sailing without much of an issue. But, uh, then again... Since there is lag due to uh, in between loading screens and other nonsense, <laughs> uh, we still, I'm still not too sure if uh, Vegas or uh, Adobe Premiere is going to like that. I mean, the video itself is still fine and everything. It's just uh, again the whole, uh, the whole uh, lag thing. It kind of messes with the editing program, it kind of makes some act kind of funny. Ow! My ass! But, yeah. We'll have to cross that road when we come to it. For right now, though, um, we're just gonna have to let the rest of the credits roll. Which is going to take some time, unfortunately. I'm not too sure how long the credit roll is exactly, but these last quite a while. Like, several minutes, exactly. Uh, I don't know how long exactly the credit roll is, but either way, that's it. We're pretty much done here. Just gotta wait for the credits to roll, and then after that, I'll start signing out. I'm pretty much done here for the night. I meant to stream yesterday, but uh, due to the circumstances at home, that kind of prevented me from streaming yesterday. So I went ahead and decided to stream today and make up for lost time. So hopefully this makes up for uh, missing out yesterday's uh, stream. But there we go. Hmm, Sony Interactive Entertainment. I wonder why they're credited here despite me playing the PC version. Hmm. So, that's interesting. At, towards the very end of the credit roll, you'll be able to view the, uh, the developer's best times for all the levels in all three Crash games, including the hidden ones. So, if you really want to push yourself to the limit, go after these developer times and really have some fun. <laughs> you won't get anything whatsoever for going the extra mile, but there you go. They're there for an extra challenge, if you truly wish to go after such a magnificent feat. But that, again, is entirely up to you. And no bandicoots were harmed in the making of this game or this trilogy. Okay, and with that done, we're heading back into the Time Twister now, and so, that's it. Alright, bada bing, bada boom. This game is pretty much finished for right now, however, there is still the matter of collecting the remaining relics, gems, and filling out the additional 45%. Well, technically speaking, I think the highest completion you can get in this game is either 103% or 105%. 
Either way, it looks like my internet is taking a shit, so now it's time for me to bid you all adieu. This is General Snivy with the Crash Bandicoot Warped Playthrough Insane Edition. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you were able to attend the live stream live, thank you for attending. Next time, we're going to be heading back into all these levels and collecting all the remaining gems that we were not able to collect. And so we're also going to be picking up the last colored gem as well. So that way we can finish up the gem collectathon. And then once all that is done, we will then go after the time trials. And my god, it's going to be one hell of a ride. So, hope you're all looking forward to that. So once again, hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all next time for when the fun of this game truly begins. See you all then.